Hello, hello. Hello, Ryan. Nice to see that uh, I can get something right. <laughs> Oh, perfect. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, I'm uh, going on to uh, Iconicon. I'm getting some feedback. One moment. Let me just turn this down. Yeah, I'm going on to Iconicon doing a live. So I figured I'd give it a shot. See how it goes. See if I have a successful mission. So far, so good. I'm not sure why I keep hearing myself double, though. Let me just close off some of this stuff. Anyway, I thought instead of showing off my uh, epic beard, I would just show off my icon. Oh, cool. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate the feedback. I'm going to try and add some pictures to the stream, see how it looks. This image comes courtesy of 3D Joes. I recently sat down with Sarge and uh, we recreated this, which I thought was pretty fun. So uh, he couldn't quite remember. Oh, how you going, buddy? Good to have you on here. Uh, yeah, so we uh, we recreated this. Uh, we couldn't quite remember. Well, Sarge couldn't quite remember exactly uh, how it sounded when he did it. It's been a long time, so I can't blame him for that. But we decided to have a bit of fun with it. Uh, he read it out, uh, added a little bit of uh, music to the background, and you, now you can recreate it. So the video is on the channel. Uh, if you want to go in there and recreate that moment where you can ring Sergeant Slaughter for that special code. Ah, oh, Ryan, new member. Thanks for joining, buddy. Yo, Joe, indeed. You should have a new icon now, the Slaughterhouse icon. For those that don't know, Ryan Sweeney is a exceptional uh, voice artist. He does very good impressions for me. Uh, the Dead Man being one of them, an absolutely perfect rendition of The Dead Man for me, and will be upcoming uh, in the Slaughterhouse Wrestling Championship as the Mountie. Alrighty, for me it just says Yo Joe, but that should be an icon for you. Let me just check what it looks like on YouTube, because it should come up. Take control of your health. Oh, yeah, I see it now. All right. For some reason on here, it just says Yo Joe. So what happens when I put that up on the screen for here? Hello, Justin. Sup? This is just a test uh, just to see how it goes. Just having a muck around. So far, so good. So members, uh, Ryan's a new member. Justin is also a member. Uh, at the end, so we're almost coming up to the end of the end of the month, which means that next weekend on the fourth will be our first members only chat. Oh, here's Gaz. Gaz is also a member. So just a reminder to the members, uh, we will be having our members only live chat coming up next weekend looks like it's going to be the fourth uh, according to my calendar time zones are a bit weird so uh yeah it is just a test just in case <laughs> so justin just for on when we go and do our members only recording um i will chat with with all the members and see if see if we want to record it um, and upload 
those videos onto YouTube, which I'm happy to do because I think that'll be a bit of fun. Uh, and Justin, I'd love it if you could um, show us live, if if possible, uh, on that weekend, your Epic Sarge collection, uh, particularly because you've got the new Fun School one, which is not in bad condition considering some of the ones you do see. I think it's just a little bit of paint wear. But, um, yeah, we will definitely take a look at that if, uh, if you don't mind. And then we can upload it at a later date if everyone wants to do so. Um, and so everyone can check it out. Be that as it may, Justin, if you aren't interested in recording it and having it on YouTube, I'd be happy to upload your video onto this channel because it's it's an epic collection. The second best size and sort of collection I've seen, mine being the first. <laughs> yeah, so I've got uh, Iconicon video coming up. We're going to have... Uh, we're talking about wrestling, the 90s wrestling, uh, the Attitude Era. So uh, we'll be sitting down for that, and we'll be doing it live. So I thought just casually hang out at the moment. Uh, didn't expect anyone would jump on and say hi, so it's really good to see everyone jumping on here. Uh, as I was saying, uh, I caught up with Sarge last week with Kelly, and we were going through this and wanted just to find out if he recollected um, the original recording and then it struck me that uh, it would be fun if we could recreate that moment so people can listen to the video and uh, recreate that moment of when you uh, you rung the secret number or the bonus number for the secret code oh cool Justin's happy to show them off live excellent sounds good so we've got three members now. We've got Ryan, Gaz, and Justin. Our first meetup, just uh, as a friendly reminder, will be um, coming up on the 4th. Because of the time zones, uh, for me, uh, I've decided to make it, I think I said 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I could be wrong on that. I'll double check. But that'll make it uh, morning for me in Australia. So if you're... If that's evening for you, that's good. It'll be morning for me, so I'll have coffee. Uh, another thing that I want to be doing for Iconicon is I'll be going through all the recent releases for Sergeant Slaughter, and I'll be doing a little bit of a talk on those. And I just sat down with Sarge recently to talk about every single action figure that's come out in recent years. So uh, the last year's reveals and releases and everything that's coming up for this year as well. Ah, oh, cool, guys. Sounds good. Hell yeah. Um, it's, it might be a little bit early in the morning for a beer here, but it's Australia, so no one will judge me anyway if I do have a beer, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, so the link to the stream will be uh, is anyone interested in jumping on now? Because I can add the link. I think I can add the link. I wonder. Let me find out. Let's find out. I'm not going to be on here for very long because this was just a test, but uh, there's a StreamYard link. See if that works. Jump onto, onto this stream. Happy to have a chat. Happy to have a hangout for a little bit before lunch. It's 11.30 a.m. here, so I'm going to hang out for about half an hour or so if anyone wants to jump on before I have to feed myself. It's up to you. Jump on in. You don't have to be a channel member on, on this occurrence to uh, jump in and say hi. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So the idea for the Iconicon video that I'll be doing as a pre-recording, half hour video will be talking about uh, the size and sort of figures that have come out. So it was the Action Force being the first one. <clears throat> and uh, Sarge and I sat down and, and had a bit of a chat about the first reveal for Action Force. And... Uh, Kelly joined us, and Kelly has uh, a few opinions on the Action Force one herself.
the epic Masters of the Universe version of Sergeant Slaughter, which for me is a personal favorite. I mean, it's hard to pick a favorite because of Sergeant Slaughter, right? I mean, they're all great. But uh, for me, the Masters of the Universe version has a very special... Um, I guess it's not really nostalgic because I never owned a Sergeant Slaughter Master of the Universe figure, but um, obviously it didn't exist back then. But the Man at Arms figure was uh, was a personal favourite of mine because my grandfather gave it to me. And when they brought out the Master of the Universe version that is Sergeant Slaughter, I was like, well, I've got to have it. All right, we've got some buddies jumping on in. What's going on, Crash. dude? <laughs> Hello, buddy. And Ryan, how are you guys? All right, I got big sexy night tonight. All right. <laughs> the Air Force representing. I'd, uh, I didn't think I'd be on camera, so I didn't bother doing my hair. I didn't right. either. It's so bad. Yeah. My <laughs> <a bit. laughs> Hang on. Let's uh, give me one moment. That's on some of my stuff here earlier. Ryan, congratulations on your new uh, channel and your in your podcast. Yeah, we just really oh, suck at uh, keeping it like within an hour. Right. Hang on, let me start my cams here. I don't really have good lighting today. Oh, there we are. Let's try that out. Hello, hello. All right, there he is. Josiah, yo. We've got here. I don't have the first Action Force one yet. I have the second one, and the Mo2 version is Stella. Oh, yeah, I agree. Oh, let me bring that up. Uh, you're going by the handle Crash, so I'll call you Crash. Let me, uh, I'm just going to bring it up, solo layout there, uh, so you can show us that uh, Sergeant Slammer. Which one? The one you just had up. Oh, that's the Sergeant, Action Force. No, the um, Fun School one. What's yeah, that? This is, this is a Sergeant Smasher. Smasher. Sergeant Smasher, that's right. Also yeah, known as Mr. Lead Base Paint. Yeah. <laughs> so don't do, do it. Yeah, don't do that. Time. No, no. Trying Sergeant Smasher, of I'm course. Knocking everything over. My camera's kind of backwards here. Then we got these two. But one of these is, is I have whatever he wants to. Now, he just got to you know, contact me on it. Oh, yes. I see it in the background. And you've opened up your wrestling one, which is cool. Oh, did I have never since I got him. I know this ain't a slaughter figure, but this was the second uh, the real fridge. Guy. Yeah. So interesting story about the fridge here in Australia is um, the only way we could get the fridge, we didn't have the same mail-in option that you guys had over in America. What we had to do was um, it was an ice cream promotion. So you bought an ice cream and then you entered in that way, <laughs> which I think, you know, if you're called the fridge, uh, an ice cream is a great way to uh, get it out to the public in Australia. I don't know, maybe New Zealand as well. I was talking to a buddy of mine from New Zealand. Treasures for Trigger, check out his channel. Uh, highly recommended. Uh, yeah, but it was a great promotion for us. We didn't ever get the mail away as far as I can remember. We didn't ever get the mail away, Sergeant Slaughter, but we did get... Uh, I'm almost certain those original uh, catalogs that you would have in with the vehicles and so forth i'm almost certain they were america and canada only so even if we had the slip that we could fill out to get an action figure for a mail away offer i don't think it was available to us anyway it was like a tease oh, we'll turn that way i'm i'm doing this on my cell phone so i'm having a hard time i got it going on that's all right mate looks it's good to me yes, i got sergeant Potter autograph i got all four of the original figures signed here he signed them across the belly. And there's a little baton in there. <laughs> oh, yes. Very good. There's, the only one I miss baton to is the USA one. It has eluded me all these years. Yeah, there's slight variations to them as well, so they're not all the same. I wonder if Gaz is going to show up. Gaz, are you jumping in? I was going to say the Sarge was the first mail away figure I ever sent away from. And when I got it, I was just like, this is magic. And then the triple T came out and I'm like, okay, now I need that too. Um, you know, cause I, with Sarge, I remember him from the AWA and then when he was in the WWF and I'm like, yeah, this is an easy pickup. 
Well, the oh. mail away one, he ended up wrestling in that outfit. And Hasbro, uh, according to Sarge, uh, Hasbro created his theme song that he walked in on, um, which rep uh, I'll have to play it on my next video. But it talks about Sergeant Slaughter being in GI Joe and all of that cool stuff as he's walking in to uh, to the stage, handing out uh, American flags and bringing all the kids onto the stage. That would have been a cool moment. Well, and I've I've heard that. Yeah. He made more money off of the G.I. Joe stuff than what he was doing with wrestling. It was, right. It was, he was like the one of the first wrestlers to actually sold his likeness or marketed his likeness. I mean, you know, Hogan never did that, but with the LGN figures. But Sarge was that crossover that was just huge for kids in the 80s. Yeah, right. Yeah, there wasn't much that he... Uh... That he was on lunchboxes. Uh, he was on. Oh, here we got. We got Gaz. Gaz is joining us. All right. I uh, I I want to one hundred percent believe that that is Gaz's real face. <laughs> What's up, guys? <laughs> How are you, buddy? We were just talking about the mail away side, which uh, very 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 similar that is to such the an awesome figure new wrestling right there. figure. Is that off of me? I think it's off of me, right? What's that, yeah, buddy? Hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear. I wonder if I can turn everyone's volume up. I'm wearing headphones, and uh, they're not the best. So that's a good figure too. I'll get to tell you when I was a kid. Sorry, guys. I think did I mute you guys? Unmute. Did you mute yourself? Oh. No, I'm just getting. Maybe it's my mic. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Uh, I think it was my mic. I was oh, getting okay. massive feedback. So, to be honest, when uh, when I first encountered this version of Sarge, I was not a fan, uh, and and I think that was the point of it, right? He was going away from being the real American hero to being a massive heel. Like a massive heel, probably the biggest heel in a long time. Uh, and we've probably not seen one come as close as getting as much heat as the sympathizer Sarge got. But as I've gotten older, I've come to actually appreciate more this gimmick. Like obviously for the time uh, it was designed to upset fans, which it did a great job of doing. Right. But yeah, having heard the story told from Kelly's point of view, having heard uh, how much fun Sarge had with the character and learning how he went all in on it. Like if he was going to do it, he was going to do it to the best of his ability, which I think he did. And so I've got now a bigger appreciation for uh, the Iraqi sympathizer, Sergeant Slaughter. And this is a great figure too. Did Sarge um, ever fan. say... Was he worried about taking this type of turn of that character for, for who he was, his gimmick, really? Because I right. mean, this could have alienated and, and made it harder for him to make money down the road because, you know, so many people, you know, tied him to the patriotism. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, it was. I think he was uh, out already out of G.I. Joe. Like his contract was up for G.I. Joe before he took this gimmick. And if I remember correctly, this original idea was going to be for Steamboat. I think Steamboat was going to be the chic type. Um, Ricky Steamboat? No, no, no. Um, not Steam. Maybe I'm thinking of not Ricky Steamboat. Tugboat. Tugboat. I'm sorry. Tugboat. Mm -hmm. Tugboat. Imagine if it was Ricky Steamboat. That would not have gone down. <laughs> Sorry, Tugboat. Uh, I think. I could be wrong on that. But I know it was designed for somebody else. Uh, and then Sarge wrote a letter and said that he wants to come back. And then I think it was then decided that that, t that turn, that heel turn was going to come to Sarge instead. So I, I do believe that he was already out of G.I. Joe by that point, but was doing conventions and stuff still. And he said that uh, before this happened, even though his contract was up, he was still doing hospital visits uh, for children and stuff like that in Sergeant Slaughter Gimmick. 
And then when the Iraqi sympathizer stuff happened, he couldn't do that really anymore. Like it, was, or it was getting too much heat and he couldn't, he couldn't go in there and, and, uh, and do that stuff, which I'm sure he missed. But from the way he tells it, uh, he was really into it. He was very into it. He, he, he loved the gimmick. He loved the idea. Uh, I think he said his wife was against the whole idea. Um, and I, afterwards, you can see why, because they got a lot of death threats. And poor Kelly got a lot of bullying in school. So, you know, it had a, it had a trickle-on effect. And then they had to move the, the match to a smaller stadium uh, for, for fear of security. And whether or not it was for a fear of security or they just didn't have enough ticket sales and they had to move it, either way, that's heartbreaking. Um, yeah, because that was, that was probably part of his payday was the – because main eventing, he was main eventing with Hogan at that point, and those ticket sales were what he was making up for when lost merch sales and such. So yeah, yeah, he he has gone as far as to say that he was disappointed that it had to get moved, uh, and money would have been a big factor in that too. What do we got here? Josiah he headlined two big WWE events, beating Warrior and then losing to Hogan, so it was two big paydays for him. I mean, losing losing to Hogan in the end was. Uh, was always going to be i mean it was inevitable right because you got to he went on he went when he first started when he first came back he was doing that whole um what do you call the the drill sergeant sort of gimmick Oop, ryan's back yeah hit the wrong was, ah, okay <laughs> welcome back so when he first started before he wasn't when he first turned up he wasn't really an iraqi sympathizer he was just disappointed in his country and he thought they'd gone weak, they'd gone soft, right? And then he aligns himself uh, as an Iraqi sympathizer. But then afterwards goes back and does his I Want My Country Back vignettes, which are all excellent. They're all amazing. Um, and the final one being that he ends up going to a primary school and talking to some children. And then at the end, uh, in a very emotional state, he, he, he says that he's finally got his country back. But even though even though it was a gimmick and even though uh, he did get his country back in the end, there's a lot of people still that will call him a traitor and an Iraqi sympathizer, even though it's, you know, it's not, it's real to me, damn it. <laughs> well, the cool part about being a heel in wrestling, you can do whatever. Right. You know, that's because I was watching uh, Jake the Snake Roberts interview with Joe Rogan talking about... As a heel, you can do anything. If you got the crowd right. mad at you, making death threats, you've done your job. True. Correct. Instead of being a face, you just, you know, you got to be Mr. Goody Two Shoe all the time. You can't say certain things. You can't hit your opponent from behind with a steel chair and think it's okay. <laughs> I'm trying to remember if he ever lost a match when he was with AWA, or whether, whether he just kept winning. Uh, like he was brought in as the real American hero. Yeah, he his a a uh, AWA run was you know they booked him very strong in that he just never got to to face like Gagne or or Vern or uh, his son you know to, to to wear the title because well they never lost either but you know he was a draw in the Midwest for hmm. you know a lot of his kids growing up he was he was huge and then when you see him on GI Joe it was like oh my God there's Sarge too so. Yeah, you see in the crowd uh, whenever you see those ones when he comes out, the crowd are all all behind him. Uh, he'd hand out American flags. He said that he uh, originally he started handing out mail away figures, like he'd open up the the boxes and just hand out the figures to people in the in the crowd. So uh, yeah, there's, there's a couple of kids with a great memory out there of, of being handed their first Sergeant Slaughter. There would have been many swagger sticks. Uh, dropped on the floor in those wrestling days, <laughs> just swept up and thrown out with the dust at the end. She <laughs> went to the janitor who said, man, maybe I should pick these up. I can hold on to them. Right. <laughs> yeah, so, you know. Yeah. From there that I grew up in, I didn't have a Sergeant Slaughter figure. I was born in 89, so I know Sarge was done gone by then. And the G.I. Joe. Right. And I didn't, I think I seen the G.I. Joe movie because my grandmother recorded on a VHS. And uh, it's kind of sad growing up. Like, well, 
I can't find a Sarge figure on the shelf anywhere. But I can find all these neon GI Joes. Yeah, right. <laughs> so Marauders would have been the last one that would have been out. I think Marauders is an '89 figure, but obviously, if you're born in '89, you're not going to. By the time you're collecting action figures um, and GI Joe in particular, what would have been like maybe five, six? Is that too young well, to be playing with Joes? The first G.I. Joe's I remember getting was the Hall of Fame Joe's for Christmas. I got Cobra Commander and Duke. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So you, you Crash, you started collecting basically at the, when it all pretty much ended. Like, 94 was the last year for, you know, the, the main run of the Amer Real American Hero. So, Like, I had Sergeant <sighs> Savage growing up, too. And I, I'm probably one of the few people that actually liked that figure because I have a childhood nostalgia about it. So Collector Express says, I'm hoping that we get a mail away styled variant of the upcoming classified Sergeant Slaughter. It would make a great retro carded style release. Uh, I 100% agree with you. Um, another thing that they could probably do is Marauders and then bring out uh, a whole bunch of Marauders classified figures. The problem with classified here in Australia is that I can't bloody find them anywhere. Most of my classified figures came from Ken from Toy Connections. Also, check out his channel, too. Big fan. Big fan of Ken. Ken. Ken's a good guy. I like chatting with him. He's a nice guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's really cool. And not just because he's Canadian. All Canadians are nice guys, right? You need to watch him that, that show Bad right. Blood. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> Which one was Bad Blood? That's about the Canadian Mafia. Is it? <laughs> is, okay. that, is it a comedy? No, no, no. Season one is legit based on actual events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I thought it'd be a comedy, but it was actually a pretty hardcore show. I, it has uh, Kim Coates in it, the guy who played Tig from Sons of Anarchy. Okay. He plays one of the main characters in it, but the overall show is a masterpiece, in my opinion. So I, I watched the first episode. What's the, what's Mike Myers' first? Uh, not first. What's Mike Myers' newest stream show that's just come out? It's about like an Illuminati style thing. Oh, that's on Netflix, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, I just watched the first episode. It must have been on Netflix. And uh, yeah, they they really ham up the stereotypical Canadian. Um, you know sensibilities and, and attitude and stuff and i was when you said that there was a canadian mafia series i just like i don't know how i can take that no offense to the canadians no offense to the hard-ass canadians but uh, yeah uh, but that show <laughs> i don't want any trouble it is, it's based on true events they have uh, actual documented footage throughout that show well there Come you out. go my first thing is like this couldn't be real you know i'm just thinking it in my head like, this can't be real because I never heard of anything like that happening from Canada. And yeah, then from I watched Kyle. it and I was like, <laughs> That's my son. Watched it, enjoyed it. Oh, cool. That's my boy. Yeah, I, you know, he's a grown adult now. Uh, my, my son's like four months old almost. Uh, my, my, both my older kids are in their 20s now. It makes me feel old. Uh, I've only got one teenager left. Hans Chow, no offense taken. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. You let us know how real. Hey, Hans. Let us know how real. How real is that show? The Bad Blood, is it? That's, that's oh, so here good. we are. Pentaveret. That's the one. The Pentaveret. Okay. They they lean very heavy on the stereotypical Canadian way. And uh, uh, yeah, I thought it was funny. Show I've been just started watching is Letter Kenny. Because uh, Shorzy starts here, I think tomorrow. So those are both Canadian-based shows. They're pretty funny. Okay, cool. I gotta, I gotta watch more Canadian things that aren't just spoofs. So this, let's move on to. I I have have if, if you're having problems get classified, let me know. I'll help you out too. So. Oh, cheers, buddy. Uh, yeah, they yeah. are almost Fine impossible better. to find here. Josiah has said that thing where the head of the Aussie Mafia kids were in a kitchen nightmare was funny. Uh, that's uh, I'm not sure what that reference. Kitchen nightmare. I don't. I don't watch I don't that. I've got my own. 
Anytime I'm in the kitchen is a nightmare, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I can't, I can't even uh, make two minute noodles right. I give it a good go though. So yeah, the, um, the classified stuff I can't get, I can't really get. We had an abundance of the, um, that Destro, Goldhead Destro. Oh, Pembe uh, Destro. <laughs> right, yeah. They, they showed up everywhere here. But the newer stuff, particularly, and the thing is, here we go, Hans Chow, Hardyberg to you both. <laughs> Berg. Berg. So, yeah, I was very lucky to be able to be invited onto the G.I. Joe Berg channel to voice Sergeant Slaughter in the Renegade series. Uh, so definitely check that out. There's another episode still to come. And, uh, yeah. Being able to play with your toys and voice the your childhood hero is it never gets old. It never gets old. Um, and part of the reason um, I can confirm here we are from my son. I can confirm that the kitchen is a nightmare when Zazel is cooking. I couldn't even call it cooking. I wouldn't go as far as to say it's cooking. I I have I don't think I've ever prepared anything. Everything I do is sort of um, I'm very impatient. If it says simmer at a low speed, I'm like, well, if I turn up the heat, it's only going to make it quicker, right? Let's not wait for this. <laughs> oh, smoke thinking on it, yeah. Yeah, right? It just, uh, yeah. yeah, and if it says 180 degrees, just turn that sucker up even more and, uh, yeah, that's half the time. <laughs> <laughs> I bet when you cook a steak, it comes out as weather, don't it? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I just buy leather at this point. It's easier and, and quicker. <laughs> just chew on a belt yeah <laughs> it's gonna have more flavor to it uh, where was salt pepper on it'd be all right oh even that's too much effort like i don't why why season just eat it all right collector express with sudden sort of being a fan channel exclusive like pimp daddy destro maybe you'll have better luck getting it um i've I've, I've believe it or not i haven't been um I haven't heard much more about the size of sort of figure. Has it been confirmed as a fan channel exclusive? Has it? It's going to be available anywhere you can order them. So Dorkside, Big Bad, Hasbro Pulse. Perfect. Amazon. Excellent. Um, good. Good if, if you're waiting for classified and brick and mortar, good luck because they didn't, nobody has them. Just order them. Yeah. I'm so so I did notice. Go on, guess. No, I, I was just agreeing with Ray. Sorry. So what I was going to say is Big Bad Toy Store now has uh, one of the figures for pre-order, I believe it's pre-order, that actually knocked me out of buying um, classified figures at all, which is the Beachhead, right? So I had pre-ordered all of Wave 1. This is going back a, a little while now. But when they first announced classified, I was all in. I was, I was all in. Yeah, look at you, get <laughs> Ryan. Look at you looking at all your... Get, get out of here. So when... Um, when they announced it, I was like, "Yep, I'm gonna get. I'm all in on this." You what? <laughs> oh, no, they all went. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I was. Yeah. Well, see, now I'm jealous. But uh, yeah, oh, I love your setup too. I've got some stuff behind me, but as this is a living area, uh, I'm, I can only go with what I've got. But I was all in for classified when it when it was first announced. Right, obviously. They were, you know, they, they needed some touch ups, but they weren't too bad for an initial release. So I was like, yep, cool. I'll pre order them all. And I did. I pre ordered all of them at Big Bad Toy Store. And then I think before they were um, before they were released, another wave was announced and, and they were saying that it was going to be an exclusive wave. So when, and Beachhead was the wave that I wanted, like Beachhead was the character that I wanted from that wave. And now I can't have it. And so I was like, well, I really want that character. I don't really want to buy anything on the secondary market because it's just, you know, it's uh, exorbitant expensive. prices, but it's expensive. And if, never, if you can't collect things, just... Well, I want to, I want to be able to collect... There's a certain level of stress that you have when you're, when you're going and when you're a toy collector, but I don't want to have added stress of not literally been able to physically go to the store to find the thing. So I cancelled. I cancelled all of them. I cancelled them all. I was like, no, I don't want. If I can't, if I can't actively get something, then I don't want it. So I just stopped. So Beachhead was the one that, that kicked me out, and now he's available for pre-order on Big Bad Toy Store. Uh, and I'm like, well, 
you know, maybe it's maybe it's time. And now with Sarge in the line, maybe it's time. So I've got I've got the Destro figure. I've got both Destro figures. I've got Cobra Commander, and now I've got a plethora of them sent to me by uh, Ken. So I've got some now, but not not a lot. What have we got here? Hans Chow. Wait, wait, wait. This is the Zazel. Well, shoot. Question time. Which Sergeant Slaughter GI Joe figure is the best? 1985, 1986, or 2010? Um, well, I will say that I'll knock 2010 off the list. I like modern era GI Joe, I guess, to a point. I was all in on the on the 25th anniversary and the modern era stuff. I was all in on those. But they didn't quite have the um, the same nostalgic feeling that I had for G.I. Joe. So I ended up selling all of them off. So I'll knock the 2010 version off. But as far as the mail away or the triple T Sarge goes, it's a tricky one because they both, they're both iconic in their own rights. Um, the, you, the triple T Sarge is the one that's most accurate to the cartoon. So you've got that. Uh, but then the USA one was like, he was literally a real life GI Joe. You know, what? I'm just going to go for it and say USA shirt. There's a long way to go around saying USA. And I guess the only reason why is because as much as I love all of them, the USA one, he, he, he promoted GI Joe wearing that outfit. He wrestled in that outfit. And I think even in the bumpers for GI Joe, he was wearing that outfit, right? So when he was doing the live action segments of GI Joe, he was wearing that outfit. So to have yeah. to have that outfit in action figure form, uh, it's sad that we didn't see it in animation other than the commercial for it. Uh, I'll go. I just want to weigh in on that. Hans Chow, what's yours? What's your favorite out of those three then? And guys, let's hear yours as well. While, while you think about that, I'll just read out this comment from Josiah. The head of the Sydney Mafia left his grandkid half a million and the father stole it to open a horrible restaurant that was featured on oh, right, featured on Gordon Ramsay's TV show <laughs> for failing restaurants. Uh, uh, yeah, it sounds like it was doomed from the start. <laughs> I'm going to Google that. That sounds like an interesting story to read. It does. It does. Imagine... Gordon Ramsay being in that, like, don't you? Yeah. Anyway, I won't do my impression of Gordon Ramsay. So who do we who do we pick, guys? Let's go round table moment. I've picked the USA mail away size and sorter is is top tier of the out of those. Who are we going with? I'd, I'd go with the the triple T, triple T Sarge. Yeah, the one I got cool. for for Christmas, I think, when I was a kid. So yeah. Yep. Fair enough. Ryan. The it was the first mail away figure. It was Sergeant Slaughter from wrestling. It was, you know, it was, it, I was at, I think like barely nine or 10 86. So, you know, 85, it was just the perfect time. So he's my favorite. All right. Last but not least, you're going to have to either make a tie or just knock triple T out of the, out of the play here. <laughs> so here we go. I'm, I'm going to go with a uh, USA because my first got, really hardcore collect and that was the first charge i had right so full disclosure i didn't I actually own... I... what's that that was a tough one because you know because i like all four of them yeah but, yeah uh, like, like i said the nostalgia part is going to be usa one because like the first one i got and the first one i got was the beater <laughs> So we, uh, let me just read this. I've got a few comments to get through. Dude, I love G.I. Joe, but I'm hating classified. Have Beachhead open uh, 100% uh, complete there. Pay shipping from the States and here's yours. Oh, thanks, mate. Uh, I might take you up on that offer one day. I've got, I've got one. a vote for USA. Well, he's available got, for Big Bad Toy Store now, so it's not impossible. So. Extra. So oh, you, you got two while they were rare, though, right? <laughs> Uh, no, I pay ninety five bucks for my beachhead because it was the Target exclusive oh. and you could not find it. So I just mm. bit the ball, oh. bought it second hand. I think so, I'm single handedly responsible for raising the prices of Sergeant Slaughter GI Joes because I just bought so many of them, and for sometimes <laughs> for stupid prices that now now they're expensive. I can't; they're impossible to get now. So USA shirt it is. Hans Chow says, "I love it when dudes knock modern figures. It makes me happy. For modern figures are indeed my jam." Oh well, that's all right. Uh, I like. I don't hate. I don't hate 
modern figures. I just um, I still have I do have the both versions of the modern era Sergeant Slaughter. Uh, I've got the USA one. And for the Triple T one as well, I've got both of those, and I don't hate them. They're good. I mean, they look. Um, he doesn't look overly buff. He looks appropriate um, for for the real life uh, Bob Remus. Uh, here's my good friend, Treasures for Trigger, some live slaughterhouse. Hearing you loud and clear from Japan. Hoping Classified makes it magically over there. Thanks, buddy. Uh, like I said, go check out Treasures for Trigger. You got a shout out earlier, mate, but you weren't here um but yeah go check out his channel it's very unique very very unique and uh, one of my so favorites. the modern era sarge figures were sdc exclusives here in the states yep was it same right. for you yeah. then? well i got it from um the club like it like everybody else did um or actually no because some people got it from obviously the live event but yeah i i was able to order both of them before they sold out from the um original uh gi joe club and they were at the time fifty dollars a piece. Uh, as for Sarge twenty ten, that figure, which I don't own by the way, is an excellent rendition of the Sarge. I own the Triple T version of Sarge growing up, though the figure is perfect and vintage. Uh, yeah, so the the only issue I don't hate modern era. I like I was all in on them, like I was saying, Hans. I was all in on them, and I still like them today. Uh, they just don't have the same nostalgic feeling for me. So when it came down to it, um, just for the just for the sake of space, um, I was I was in a I was not in a position where I could have all all of these things. Right, I needed to sell some stuff because it was just too much, and they unfortunately were sold off. Not the Sarge, not the Sarge figures, but uh, the twenty fifth one, the thirtieth anniversary Rise of Cobra. All of that stuff it literally got out of hand in fact i ended up selling off a lot of my vintage gi joe figures as well uh, and i only collected i uh, only kept the ones that were sentimental or were obviously sergeant slaughter so i don't i don't shit on them i like them uh and i and at the time they were on prominent display so if you love them that's great you should they're good we're gonna the hard part with collecting is what was that, Ryan? What were you saying? Sorry, I got distracted by the 2006 Sarge. With collecting, it's almost like you have to either pick one character or pick one line. You're right. either vintage, modern, or classified because it, space and cost, just to, trying to find these figures, it's, it's just too mm. hard to do. Uh, yeah, I 100% agree. And um, so now I'm picking up action figures from the vintage line that will fit with the Slaughterhouse Wrestling Championship. So anything that looks like it could wrestle is now part of my collection. But I've had to really streamline the only, for the first time in a long time, the only collection that I've let get a little bit out of hand is the Masters of the Universe, um, uh, the new stuff, the Origins. Uh, those Those are getting a bit out of hand now. So we've got uh, Clark asking Valiverse. Valiverse as in my opinion on it, or is it because uh, we've got this version here and we've got this version here. And I can tell you that for me, this is a solid representation of a modern day Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that looks... There we go, better. Post up. So I think it's a good representation in the in the face about how Got this one. Watch that. The only nitpick I have with the Valiverse, which it's not really a nitpick because you only have to spin around, so I have a, I'm poor. I'm not gonna buy a spinning chair. <laughs> Yeah, that's so. The, my my opinion, my preference out of the two of them. This is my I've got both of them in my collection now. This is my preference out of the two of them because this one gives Sarge a completely new look. Right? He's there is no there is no action figure representation of this version of Sarge anywhere. It's completely unique. It's got a really cool jacket. 
Uh, finally, it comes with a, yeah, and came in the, the Slammer variant. Uh, so I really, I really dig that one. This one, uh, while it is still an awesome looking Sergeant Slaughter, seems to be uh, more pressure from the from the fans to bring out something that looks more close to his GI Joe. So he's got the black tank top and the and the boots, uh, which are very classic GI Joe uh, Sergeant Slaughter. So it's still a great figure, but I do think that it's um, probably a little bit of pressure from guys saying, you know, I like your Sarge, but can we get him in a tank top? Well, especially uh, too when folks thought they could just kit match between him and Carrick, so that they could get right. that, you know, the 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 tank top for Sarge. Right. Tank top Sarge exists. Tank top Sarge exists as an action figure, um, and so bringing it out as um, as an action force one just seems like uh, poor Bobby had to, to had to go with the fans. But uh, this one is definitely a more unique look and take on Sarge. And this is uh, Zazel's figure whenever he, he's ready for it. Oh, cheers, buddy. <laughs> so I've got a uh, little classified saying USA 1986 Warthog Sarge in that order. Yeah. So obviously it has no love for Marauders at all. <laughs> Marauders didn't even make the cut. Magnificent Kaboom. Now, Magnificent Kaboom, if you're not familiar with uh, his channel, he does some uh, uh, amazing animation. He's done some animation for my channel, in fact. Uh, and I cannot speak highly enough of his uh, ability to turn a, a cartoon around in a short amount of time. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's fantastic stuff. It's top shelf, in fact. And we've got here, Beachhead showed up at a discount chain bargain hunt a few months ago well that's the that's the what do they call that fomo fear of missing out will make you go and and um spend 90 dollars on a beachhead won't it ryan yeah especially when they were getting it for 9.99 after target you know right sent them, yeah sold them all there so yeah so collector express says he mi mixed and matched the two valiverse figures together i'd like to see how that um how that Came about how it looks. So jump onto the Slaughterhouse uh, Facebook group and drop a photo of that because I'd love to see it. Uh, Hans Chow, a crash over you, there uh, flexing all the awesome yeah. toys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does have, have uh, his huge collection of Sergeant Slaughter sign stuff. Um, so I've, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of your collection. Transfer Trigger looks awesome. Thanks, buddy. Oh, here's a good one. Equalizer or Triple T? Good question. Good question. Does anyone know what Triple T stands for? Oh, tag. Team Turmoil or no. Close. Oh. Very close. It's something tag team, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you covered this. That's the worst part. <laughs> if anyone has, I have. <laughs> I can't think of what the last word is. It's a <sighs> tag team Terminator. Terminator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an iconic vehicle. So when, when, so full disclosure, I never owned a size of slaughter action figure when I was a kid. Right, I always wanted the triple T and and the triple T Sarge. I. I don't even know if I knew what, um, that the mail away even existed. I don't know if it even existed at that point as a kid because we didn't have that offer. But the Triple T Sarge being closer to the cartoon was the one that I wanted. So uh, as a kid, as a kid, you don't often think that you're never going to see a toy, right? Because you don't know how production runs work. You don't know how waves work. You just know that there's a toy and maybe one day you're going to find it, right? So I always held out that I was going to find a triple T. The only Sergeant Slaughter that I ever found in stores was the Marauders Sergeant Slaughter. That you know, uh, the, the the first uh, carded Sergeant Slaughter that was available. So I picked it up, I looked at the card, I looked at the action figure, I looked at the colors, and I was just like, 
no, nah, this is not the sergeant's order I want, right? I would put it back thinking, full thinking that I was eventually going to come across and find a triple T sad, but I never did. I never, I never found it. So maybe that's why I overcompensate now and buy so many. Uh, so the, to answer the question, uh, Hans Chow, you were close, mate. You were close. Tag Team Terminator. But yeah, to answer the question whether it's the Equalizer or the Triple T, I think that the Equalizer is the best vehicle in the Marauders um, motor pool. But the Triple T tank, you just uh, you can't go wrong with that. That's, yeah, I will pick the Triple T over the Equalizer. It's going to probably blow some people's minds. Is it, was your first Sergeant Slaughter figure then, like when you got into your adult years, was it the wrestling figure or was it the G.I. Joe figure? Um, so oh, oh. the first, I would have, I probably would have had a wrestling figure of Sarge before I got a G.I. Joe version. Uh, I got to remember that. But I do recall that I was given by a friend because I was I was all in on um, the modern era stuff so I didn't bother collecting any of the vintage stuff anymore but I was like all right I'm moving forward I'm going to go modern era now <laughs> and so I'm probably I'm probably going to say that the first Sergeant Slaughter I ever owned as a GI Joe would have been those uh, 2010 ones and then a friend of mine from Perth gifted me a Warthog Sergeant Slaughter <sighs> so now I've got a Warthog Sarge. And the reason why he gave me that was because um, I had the hat. Like, I had the hat for some reason. I think I was probably going to make a custom Warthog, right? Uh, so I got the figure, and then I was like, well, this is pretty cool. I've always wanted one. This is not the one I wanted. And so I was like, well, I'll go back, and I'll, and I'll pick up the one I did want as a kid. And that just started the whole the whole obsession started from there. Because then I got – I think I got it in a lot where they were – I got a USA Sarge that had the Triple T top instead so it was the wrong one right and i was like oh it's close but not close enough and so i got the triple t sarge and now i've got half a triple t and half a mail away and a full triple t and a warthog so i was like well i've got to complete the usa one and so i ended up getting um another lot which also had another um warthog sarge and then they just sort of started i started getting so many and then i started mixing and matching parts to make the best representation of that one and then somewhere in there my brain snapped and uh, <laughs> I was like, I've got to collect them all now. These are like Pokemon. I must, I must own all the Sergeant Slaughter figures now. And so I just kept picking them up. And then um, if I saw one at a, at a toy show, I'd pick it up. If my friends uh, had a spare one, I'd, uh, I'd try and trade for it. Or There's one story that's uh, particularly amusing where uh, a friend of mine named Jaden, he had the command ring with Sergeant Slaughter's face on it, so the um, infantry command ring. And he said that I could have it for nothing if I sang a particular song at karaoke, right? So I only, so <laughs> the, the choices were I can sing a full song in Scooby Doo voice, or I can sing a song uh, that's ordinarily sung by a female, but I would sing it. And so to get this command ring, I ended up singing All I Want to Do is Make Love to You. Um, which in a crowded uh, city pub was gave me in the, back in those days gave me a few raised eyebrows. Um, as Scooby Doo. No, no, I didn't do it as Scooby Doo. It was one or the other. <laughs> I was like, I could probably, yeah, I don't do a great Scooby Doo. I Scooby Doo about as good as I cook. So um, I decided if I was going to embarrass myself, I'd do it in the one that doesn't kill my voice entirely. So Zazel sings a heart song for Sarge. Yeah, it's hot, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I was all in on it, though. I gave it my all. I gave it passion. Uh, I gave it, yeah. It was. I earned that ring. I still have it. Um, yeah, I earned it. Uh, little classified says Marauders plastic is a little more, a little bit more credible. Opinion. Questionable, yes. Uh, the way I put it is, it's like ma uh, supermarket mannequin plastic. Yeah. Like he looks like a supermarket mannequin. Tougher one. Oh, hang on. Before I get to that question, uh, I like the option of having the removable glasses and hat, but it would have been nice to have alternate heads for those uh, with those being part of or glued onto the head. So have a head that doesn't have a removable um, glasses. I think removable glasses and a hat have, have become standard now because there isn't one 
figure here that doesn't have a removable hat or a removable glasses. They all, they all come standard now. Yeah, That's just the way it is. The class is just uh, more bits to so, lose. So I look at it. Uh, Gaz, did you end up picking whether you wanted the equalizer or the triple T as the top tier? Well, the equalizer is the Mahler base, right? With the missile rack? Right. Yes. Mm. Triple tier that. I go with the equalizer. Right. I yep. think. Ryan? I like, the, I like the, the, the camouflage pattern on it and the I fact that say. it's a Mahler. I should say equalizer, but in my mind, Sarge would be driving the triple T. It's just perfect for him. Well, but, it'd be the warthog over the triple T. But. Well, that's the next question. Is uh, triple T over equalizer? Wow. Triple T or the warthog? That is a tougher one. That's much tougher, in my opinion, because I wholeheartedly believe that the warthog is the best troop transport available for G.I. Joe. Um, Heck yeah. Um, I love that thing. I've, I did a review of it and I actually pulled the shell off and looked at the internal because I didn't put it together myself. And the amount of de detail that's inside it, I just got dedicated seating area for very specific roles, plus enough room in the back to comfortably sit six um, and uncomfortably as many as you can cram in there. So, yeah, I'm all for, I'm all for the Warthog as a vehicle, but Triple T... Royal iconic. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna bow to the warthog on this one. I was gonna say if the warthog yeah. had fifty caliber guns instead of those missiles, it would have been perfect. Yeah, if they yeah, it, I'm surprised that um, when they brought it out as the night rhino that they didn't shift out of the missiles and put something else on there. Um, but yeah. Uh, it is a classic. I ruined it. So, <laughs> <laughs> build and brawl, Sergeant Slaughter. I love that figure. So that 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 was a really difficult figure to find, and I think it was because both wrestling and GI Joe fans wanted that because it was close enough in scale for modern era. Um, so sorry, did everyone did everyone shout out there? I got distracted by uh, build and brawl, but did everyone pick a a winner out of this one? I'm going warthog. Warthog. Warthog is it warthog across the board? Yeah. Ryan, yeah. Ryan said, yeah. You just want a different. You don't want the missiles on there, Ryan, right? Yeah. Oh, I just if if it would have been it would have been perfect if it had guns on it instead of missiles. That's all. I'll yeah, I agree. I agree with that. So, did anyone else have the build and brawl? Because um, I've still got it, but I, it's um, it's got a good face I, on it. I know people preferred that build and brawl. Sarge is a nice replacement. My son actually had the Undertaker. Yeah, right. And I think Stone Cold. And they were for this, you know, four inch size figures. They were, they were uh, awesome. They were just amazing. Well, yeah, they look good. I think, I think his was probably the first one that they exaggerated a little. Like they gave him a little bit more height than the rest of them, uh, probably to appease the Joe fans as well. But there was a trend. Um, there was a trend where they would give him the green undershirt, but they wouldn't paint the camo on it. And I think the trend started with that figure, if I'm not mistaken Hans Chow yes gas equalizer my man <laughs> like they're all great like I <laughs> don't make me choose Hans Chow Hans is bringing all the tough questions collector express I used a vintage Hasbro head that has the hat and glasses as part of the head for my custom I have seen that I have seen that um, that is a great custom Classified Sarge. I was amazed at how well that old head looked on the classified body. Yeah, it's um, that's the Hasbro WWF figure, and that head does look amazing. That custom is on point. It's um, yeah, I'm almost tempted to knock a head off of one of mine and do the same thing. But now that we have one coming, I don't have to. <laughs> but that is a great figure. Um, yeah. So the uh, 
as far as the equalizer is concerned, so the the thing I'm actually going to touch on this for a a video that I'm doing for Cobra Convergence Six, and that is that there are more figures than there are spots for in vehicles. So there's always one figure that doesn't have a seat, and if you look at the um, the pictures, you've I think the one person that misses out is Barbecue. I think Barbecue doesn't get a seat in any of the box art. But uh, that is rectified, believe it or not, and I will show you how. Um, well, you're asking the wrong guy, buddy, because Sergeant Slaughter all the way. But let's hear from let's hear from some people who aren't biased. <laughs> oh, Sarge right. beats Pentor. So Pentor beats Storm Shadow. So we all know that Sarge beats Storm Shadow. Just yeah. it's simple. Sarge doesn't do the job to ninjas. Just get over it. I don't know. I'm a pretty big ninja fan. Yeah, yeah, I can tell by the headband. <laughs> but uh, because I'm because I'm here, I'm just gonna say Sergeant Slaughter. So a fight, by the way, that I don't think we've ever seen. True, uh, I don't think we ever will. But so, I guess it depends on. It's it's weird. It's weird because I want to just say Sarge beats everyone, but who could who could who could beat? I mean, even Nemesis and Forza gave it a good go, but he cheated, right? He threw something in his face. Uh, he used a foreign object, right? <laughs> <laughs> so the Snake Chucker beat Storm Shadow. Uh, is that in the comics? Well, no. Just Serpentor is the you know the, the amalgamation of you know all these great leaders, and he was always portrayed yeah. to be. The strongest cobra so you know he's going to beat storm shadow plus in the comic book his dna did come from storm shadow so he should be able to beat storm oh, shadow then. i did not know that yeah, yeah in the know. cartoon it was sarge that was supposed to give him the dna but in the uh comic book run it was it was uh my better use storm shadow's dna well there you go i need to catch up on my comics um, I wasn't even aware that they still... So they still created him like they did in the cartoon, but in a different fashion. Yes, but Ser Serpentor in the cart in the cartoon was completely different than the comic. Comic, he was more likable. He was more of a, a leader that the Cobra, um, off, you know, the Vipers and the, the uh, soldiers would want to follow compared to the buffoon that he was in the cartoon. Right. Well, but he did get killed by an arrow shot by Zartan. So, if that's true, then Zartan can beat Storm Shadow too. So, <laughs> let's not go that far. Hey, <laughs> he knows what he knows. The Cobra Bunch, nice. I need one of those, but with Sergeant Slaughter on on every corner. The Slaughter um, Bunch, the Slaughter Core. <laughs> Um, I got this off the, the website you could get order your stickers from. Uh, Slaughterhouse Wrestling. Oh, uh, chips. Um, yeah, the Slaughterhouse. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is where I found these. You can T upload public? designs. Yeah, T, uh, maybe it is T Public. You can upload well, there's designs. And T and, uh, there's two T, T Public and uh, what's the other one? Teespring? Oh, Teespring. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought it was. Mm. So I got it with with my uh, Skeletron stuff. Oh, right. Well, if anyone wants to wear an official Slaughterhouse T-shirt, they are available on Teespring and uh, Tee Public. Uh, get yourself a Slaughterhouse mug and or sticker. Um, oh, here we go. Sergeant Slaughter versus GI Bro. And who's GI Bro? Uh, I'm not sure. Face GI Bro. Would go on to five time work. Who's GI Bro? GI Bro is Booker T. Booker oh, T? is it? Yep. That was his uh, wrestling gimmick in Houston. <clears throat> before Booker T or after? Oh, no, way yeah. before Booker T. Or way before Booker T and WCW. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, we're learning something today. Josiah, also a fountain of knowledge by the looks of it. Uh, Sergeant is prime would win that one though if it was out of those two. 
according to Hans Chow. I'm going to have to look that up because uh, I didn't even know that he went by that gimmick as GI Bro, which you would think as, as three GI Bros sitting right here, that that would be something that uh, we, we would be aware of. But uh, I, don't, I do know Booker T, but I do not know GI Bro. Very interesting. Sorry. I have a wealth of wrestling knowledge that's, you know, just a waste, I think, most of the time. Oh, mate, wrestling knowledge is never a waste. I will say that you do an amazing uh, impression of the dead man and also the Mountie. So those two. Oh, here we are. Favorite Sarge wrestling match. I think I think one that goes this is not this is not necessarily a favorite, but one that I've come to appreciate is his boot camp match with Triple H. So as much as he's he's obviously later on in years, but I think I know that I know that Sarge ends up um, coming back to the ring a few times after that, but um, sparingly. And he was commissioner at the time. But the thing about that match is that it's a very um it's a it really it touches on a lot of classic sarge wrestling um staples right so he does the cobra clutch he he takes a bump on the top turn buckle or on the ring post and then flies over the top rope you know he does so he he touches on uh, some of those classic sarge moments that you probably hadn't seen in a while and shows that he's still got it right um but I think it was a respectful send off and a passing of the torch to Triple H because it really helped elevate Triple H. China was in there as well. I've got a new. I've always been a fan of China, but I've got. I've I've gone back and, and found more appreciation for her and what she brought to um, the WWF slash WWE at the time. And I wasn't even really a big fan of Triple H back then either. Um, but I've come to appreciate him more as a wrestler and that whole degeneration x um you know that whole that whole time you know, with, with the attitude era as well they the with sarge as the commissioner with dx he allowed them to do the sophomoric humor with the you know uh they would make fun of his chin when they they had the the face mask with the right yeah yeah <laughs> yeah you know, that's great he, he helped them get over to that generation of wrestling fans, which at that point was me because it was, it was funny and it was that right. spinning in the eye of the authority figure. Um, so it was, yeah. It, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It just shows, I mean, I, I, I guess you don't have an appreciation of, of what Sarge has been able to do until really I saw your channel you know, when you start posting some of those old matches, my favorite is uh, when he faced uh, Pat Patterson. Yes. And, yep. At street fight. And that was a street fight before they did street fights. Yeah. It was just an amazing match. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of blood, sweat and tears that went into that one. Um, particularly blood. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> what about you guys? Have you got a, have you got a favorite? Um, Nemesis Enforcer. <laughs> yeah, Nemesis Nemesis Enforcer. <laughs> no, uh, I saw one way back when I was a kid, and uh, the Worcester Auditorium, and I think he fought Pat Patterson there. Yeah, that was a yeah. long time ago. My stepfather was taking me, so I'd say go with that. It's like the only time I actually saw him live, so I don't remember much of it because I was just a little kid. But that would be it. It's pretty cool. So the, the, he ended up having to drop the Cobra Clutch because of the Million Dollar Man had his Million Dollar Dream, which was the same move, essentially. So he went on to use the Camel Clutch. Uh, we've got we got it here. Just Googled it and saw this headline. Booker T sues Activision and Blizzard for jacking GI Bro character. Well, don't jack anyone uh, unless you expect to get uh, sued. GI Bro? GI bro, you would think, yeah, yeah, okay. The size was really a Midwestern Territory guy. We didn't see much of his prime. In real life, Briscoe was the toughest stooge. 
No, Pat Patterson was. Briscoe was a tough dude, but if you really saw what Pat Patterson did in his his youth and knowing what he went through, Pat Patterson was was way tougher than Briscoe. Briscoe brothers as a as a tag team, yes, two of the toughest guys out there, but Pat Patterson was was a pretty tough guy for what he had to put up with. I only just found out recently that Owen Hart was the original British Bulldog. Uh he used that he used that moniker before it was officially used by the British Bulldogs. Apparently, uh, I've never seen him in that in that moniker. But yeah, apparently, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I'll never admit it. <laughs> Jazzwares just uh, released some images of Owen Hart figures. They have the they signed a contract with, with Martha uh, to oh, produce okay. Owen Hart figures, and they're starting out with. Some of his uh, stampede wrestling figures, so we'll be in, in the right. start building. Which the Black Heart, of course, one of my favorite Owen Hart characters. Well, I've only just started to um, look into some of Bret Hart's, not Bret Hart, sorry, Owen Hart's uh, earlier days. So I've got a lot of catching up to do. Um, the Blue Blazer being a fan favorite, which I believe at the time was was. Pretty much laughed off, but I think he, I think he committed to it. That eventually the the crowd, you know, they came they came around. Um, but with the next episode of the Slaughterhouse Wrestling Championship going to Canada, uh, with the Hitman versus the Mountie, if you haven't checked out the if you haven't checked out the Slaughterhouse Wrestling Championship, it's on the it's on the main page of this Slaughterhouse um, channel, this very channel that you're watching on right now. Uh, so go check it out because we've got the ori original. First episode was Sergeant Slaughter versus Nemesis Enforcer. Um, the second one was the Macho Monkey Wrench versus Vega the Snake. After that, I believe it was um, who did I have there? Blunker versus Taurus. Yep. And then just recently had the British Bulldog versus Kano the Warlord. After that, we're going to Canada, where Ryan will be. Uh, portraying the character of the Mountie going up against uh, Ken Poe's uh, the Hitman. So it's a the the, the episodes are few and far between because it takes so much effort to make, um, and I only I only ever record them when I feel like I've got the effort to do it because if I don't, it's going to look just awful, and I really I really want it to come across as a like a main event style. Um, um, show like the sort of house is a main event style show, so hopefully people enjoy it. How if you like GI Joe, Berg, play motion. how long do they take you to record? It seems like there's a lot of work that goes to it. Yeah, so the thing about it is, I, I, I a lot of dumb luck goes into it because <laughs> some because I'm playing with my toys, right? That's and that's the thing. That's the reason why I started doing it because I wanted an excuse to start playing with my toys again. It's all right to have toys and collect toys and display toys, but I wanted my toys to be toys again. So I started playing with them, and this was a great way to do it. If I film it, then it's not weird, right? Anyway, so sometimes the best matches, the best moves are accidental, like because I, 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 it's all done with my hands, like puppeteering, right? But sometimes I'll use like a like a bamboo stick and some blue tack or some sticky tack. And some of the best moves that I've captured were when the sticky tack accidentally released and then it like just like gravity did the work for me. And I was like, oh, that looks good. That was, uh, yeah, okay, I'll keep that in. Uh, so, I mean, it usually will take, if I really commit to it, I can get it done in a few weeks. But, um, yeah, usually what I could record, I could record for, and I've, and I've done it before, two things have happened that are frustrating for me, is I've recorded something for so long and then gone to go back and have a look at it and it didn't save. So I've just wasted my time there, right? But a second thing is sometimes I'll record something and I'll have the camera going and it could be two minutes that I'm mucking around in front of the camera and I've only got about five seconds worth of usable stuff, right? So um, that three minutes is basically just trying to get something that looks good enough. And then that can be a little bit disheartening too. You spend five minutes on something and then you know, you go back and do five minutes and five minutes, um, it becomes tedious if you're only going to get a few seconds worth of stuff out of it. 
which is Hans Chow. If I film it, it's not weird, right? Exactly, exactly. Quote me on that. Screenshot, quote it. Uh, Hans I, Chow, I, if you're I not part of the... A, I call that a jobberism. I call that a jobberism. That's a, that's a Steve... That's a Steve knowledge right there. You're like, right, oh, right, I'm right. It's not weird. I'm, I'm filming, so yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, it's not weird. It's not weird. Hans, if you're not part of the uh, Slaughterhouse Facebook group, um, you should definitely join, screenshot, and post that on there. Hold me accountable for what I say. <laughs> and then we go, Josiah, there were plenty of Tampa guys that made the mistake of messing with Briscoe, and he was famous for breaking arms and collarbones. Uh, yeah, he's tough. Briscoe's tough. Have, has there ever been a match between him and... Um, um, oh, why have I forgotten yeah. Pat Patterson, yeah, yeah. I don't think Do it. it was because Pat ran in the Northeast, which was the WWF at the time, which was Vince's dad's. And then he would also run in Canada and San Francisco, where the Briscoe brothers, their father, no, I'm thinking of the Funks, apologize. Briscoe's ran out of Oklahoma. So they would run Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana to Florida. Right. So during their prime, no, but um, both of them were great minds for the WWE. Pat Patterson was the one that created the Royal Rumble. So there you um, go. And most great finishes during the Attitude Era, that was Pat Patterson. So, well, very cool. I did not know that. Uh, Sergeant sort of claims to be the one to introduce um, entrance music, ringside music. So when he came out with the Marine Corps him. Uh, it all it all came from there. Yep. So unless you can find an earlier um but I tend to believe everything Sarge tells me, so well and with Sarge it was that was the theme music that came out, but if you want to look at who brought rock and roll into wrestling, it was the fabulous Freebirds. Gotcha. Oh right, yes, yes. Um so I've actually gone back and started watching some of the Japan stuff because there's a lot of matchups that happen in Japan that uh, you wouldn't have expected to happen. So um, Sarge went up against the Legion of Doom uh, over in Japan. Um, I need to go back and, and watch some more stuff. But are, are there any ones that we should be looking out for that are hidden gems, little nuggets, Ryan, that you're aware of? If you can find any world-class championship wrestling, uh, which was the Von Erichs or the Freebirds going at each other. They yeah. had a few that was just, it was your true good versus evil. The Von Erich kids were, you know, the all American, you know, these are the boys you want to bring home to mom and dad. And, you know, the Freebirds were the degenerates and they, you know, the druggies, the drinkers, and it, they were just, it was perfect. Um, right. Any steamboat versus Ric Flair matches are awesome. Um, uh, Bachwinkle, it, um, I can't think of his tag team partner, AWA, uh, Nick Bachwinkle, you know, he, he wrestled a number of different great guys. These are going way back. Um, mm. but if you ask my favorite, it's going to be the rock and roll express versus the midnight express with Jim Cornette, uh, as the manager for the midnight express. I saw an image for that a few weeks ago. Um, so you've just reminded me to go and, and uh, go and find that match and give it a watch. Um, we've got here, if you don't include Mang Haku, Florida, and Minnesota had the toughest guys. Well, uh, you go. Road Warriors, they're from Minnesota, Chicago. Um, you yeah. know, if you want to bring tough guys, Samoans, uh, Afa and Sika, you know, you know, they were all tough. Any of the Samoan family, just you didn't mess with. As comic as a comic book fan in the eighties and nineties, the tag team and and being an Australian, the tag team uh, Road Warriors slash Legion of Doom, you couldn't get any better than that, right? As a as a nineties eighties nineties kid, because it sort of blurred the lines between um, wrestling and uh superhero sort of that look that that whole outlandish outfit uh here we go 
do you have a favorite SWC match that you filmed? I am keen for the Mountie and Hitman episode, SWC being the Slaughterhouse Wrestling Championship. Thanks for the shout out. A uh, little classified. Uh, she's a member of the Patreon. So if you're not a member of the Patreon, jump on there. Uh, so SWC match. Do I have a favorite SWC match that I filmed? I find that um, I kind of I like and 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 dislike everyone for different reasons because <laughs> I because I had to put effort into them. I think the one the, the no brainer was always going to be Sergeant Slaughter versus Nemesis Enforcer. Um, I had to do that as the first one. I think the audio quality on because I, I didn't have a very good microphone. I was recording everything. I record, I, I literally, this phone is what I film everything on. I film everything on this phone, except for what I'm filming now here live. But when I'm doing the SWC, I do everything from my phone. I edit on my phone, I upload from my phone. And um, at the time I was recording the audio off my phone too. So the audio can be pretty bad between um, different episodes. Like it's not consistent at all. I think the last one was probably the best one as far as audio is concerned. But I, I just I have a love for the Macho Monkey Wrench character. He's just he's just so like he's I don't know he's such a lovable idiot that um, I enjoy I enjoy him whenever he's on there I enjoy him. So that's my favorite. Um, and, but I am changed to King Macho Monkey Wrench. I was Macho just... Macho King. Yeah, it's Macho yes. King Cobra. Yeah. Yeah, Macho King Cobra. Yeah, I was blown yeah. away. I'm like, this is perfect. Yeah. This is just absolutely <laughs> perfect. So I knew that I was going to do an homage to um so full disclosure, uh most of the time I don't know who's going to win. So it usually sometimes sometimes in the moment something will happen and who I thought was going to win isn't going to win anymore so with the sarge versus nemesis enforcer i went in there thinking oh imagine if nemesis enforcer won that would really blow some minds sarge loses his own tournament and then it got into it and i was like nah sarge will win this one and then i just couldn't do it i just couldn't bring myself to do it and then um with the i wanted to do an homage for the macho man versus jake the snake little thing that they had with the snake that comes to the ring and he bites him on his bicep and all of that, right? So I wanted to touch on that, but I wanted to use Vega because he has the snake tattoo wrapped around him. And instead of having an actual snake or a cobra in the ring, it was poison tip claws. And then I thought um, that if if he was poisoned, how did that affect him mentally? And so now he goes around calling himself Macho King Cobra. He's wearing the outfit from Saul Pentor. Uh, so he's got the big cobra head on. I was like, yeah, yeah, that'll do. That'll do. But yeah, that one's my favorite. Gaz, have you seen the Sword of House Wrestling Championship? Yeah, I have. I have. I enjoy them mostly. As the um the the one where you had Sarge versus Sarge, the different Sarges, that was my favorite. Oh, uh, yeah, th that was a uh, a comic series that I did called the WWO, which is World Ring World Wrestling O Ring. And it's still images that I that I that I made, and I had all the sages go up against each other in that. So every every issue that I did, it was originally just um, pictures. I put music to and put on the channel later. But every at the end of every issue, a new sage would walk in. So at the end of the first one, sage walks in, and then there's a sage versus sage match. At the end of the sage versus sage match, and a third sage and sort of walks in, and so the next one, the next issue was um, a triple threat match. And then it just kept going. And then at the very end, there's um, just every single different variant of Sergeant Slaughter I had, including international variants, jump in this giant Royal Rumble. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, check. That's like yeah. I was just taking photos. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, and that I did actually filmed that decades ago, like when I first started um, hoarding Sergeant Slaughters. So that was the pre Slaughterhouse Wrestling Championship. Um, before I knew I could record playing with my toys and wouldn't get judged too harshly. Modern wrestling versus classic wrestling. Uh, get out of here, Hans Chow. Classic. <laughs> you know it is. All the classic stuff. Unless uh, you've got any pushback on that, guys? Ryan, Gaz? No, it's it's classic for me. 
you believed you believed right. in yeah. the wrestlers it wasn't a character it was a gimmick um, yeah yeah you know, people believe sergeant slaughter turned against america people believe that yeah. still to this day yeah. you don't yeah. see that now no uh you get canceled today for any of that stuff that happened back then uh guys have you got a I, I i like the classic stuff but um i'm watching AEW. i just i just have fun watching it Think it's oh okay. yeah, it's not bad stuff. It's good stuff. Um, Ken actually started sending me uh, clips and links to it, so uh, I'm enjoying what I am seeing. Uh, I think it's actually starting to sort of coming back to some of that that classic um, sensibilities. Oh, good. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. I don't know that that sweaty brow. <laughs> that might be a heel turn. <laughs> But yeah, look, if, if you enjoy current uh, modern wrestling, then go for it. I think the last good wrestling for me that I was actually semi-invested in was the Attitude Area and then, uh, era, and then I sort of... Oh, we lost these. Uh oh. Now I'm here. Okay. I don't know what happened there. I got frozen. Uh, okay. Someone in the background is trying to hack me and tell me to stop talking shit about uh, modern wrestling. So I'll <laughs> I'll stop while I'm ahead. <laughs> moving on. Moving on. Yeah, Ken's in there. <laughs> Ken's hacking me. Recently recovered all of my childhood stuff from my parents' place, including my box of comics, lots of GI Joe, and also a crystal ball figure still on the card. Weird uh lots of other stuff too so the crystal ball figure on the card how's the uh the condition of the of the card and the bubble and all of that stuff um because you, you hear a lot of collectors finding um their old collections uh which would be awesome i don't i mine's long gone but um if the condition's still good it was um stored in a in a correct way uh, yeah interesting no mold hopefully or damage I have to admit, I was a huge Crystal Ball fan. I loved that figure. I know that there was a lot of people that didn't, but I just really loved it. Uh, yeah, like I never, I never had an issue with any of the GI Joes. Like I, I grew up uh, in the eighties, where that that transition was happening as I was collecting, and I never had an issue with the transition. Um, maybe it was because I was a superhero fan. I was a Ninja Turtle fan. Um, you know. Um, maybe maybe that i wasn't really into um power rangers or anything like that but maybe because of that i sort of like accepted that transition but it was never an issue for me i could i could gladly have a sci-fi in my collection next to you know size and slaughter and it wouldn't be too much of a big deal for me i didn't have a size and slaughter but i did have a sci-fi so i don't know if that's much of a uh, consolation but Side and Slaughter, I'll believe, was a kayfabe turn. John Cena's apology to China, not very entertaining. Um, I don't know what's going on with John Cena lately. He um, seems to be apologizing a lot for a lot of things. Yeah. MJF and Hook have potential. Uh, I won't disagree with you. MJF's a uh, back. The Cena thing was not cool. Uh, John Cena is not cool. He used to be cool. <laughs> like all of it. I used to think I knew what cool was. But now cool's not cool anymore. I'm starting to wonder. I'm starting to wonder if I was ever cool. My mum thinks I'm cool. Oh yeah, hi mum. I wonder if she's watching. Hi mum. If she's not, well, we're in luck. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, this has been a fun hangout. Uh, I went for an hour and a half and I said I was just going to go for half an hour. So this was a great hangout. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I told you it's so, yeah. I don't know when to stop. It's, uh, yeah, it was, yeah, it was a fun hangout. It was good to talk, Joe's. Thanks to everyone in the chat. 
uh hans chow vintage figures versus modern figures and vintage wrestling versus modern wrestling both have their highs and lows and both are worth loving for what they are uh yeah but you're not you collect what you collect what you like um and don't let anyone tell you otherwise is my opinion um if you are into what you're into then that's up to you it's your you know it's what? your money it's your time it's their toys and toys make you happy right. and that's what it's yeah. all about so you like vintage go for it if you like modern go for it if you like classified go for it same thing with wrestling figures whatever makes you happy enjoy the product and don't let anybody else tell you what to enjoy that's right i 100 percent agree with you good stuff good good word and we've got josiah it's hard to hate on cena with all the stuff though uh yeah like i mean we can, yeah you're not wrong there either i'll give you that Anyone, anyone that's doing anything uh, to do with a good cause cannot be all bad, right? Uh, I will, I will agree with that. I'll and agree I with you on that one. You run the risk of upsetting somebody when you say something, so it, it's just hard sometimes just to express express your opinion and and take it from there, you know. So John Cena was a you know, has done a lot of good things with for kids for a number of years, and you know that you you have to look at the good with the bad. Peacemaker is probably the best thing he's done in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, from Wallaroo. It was in my closet for the past 30 years in the box with the comics, about as cool, dry, dark as it gets. The card is a little bit up near the peg. Oh, it's normal and around the edges. Bubble dense, but intact. That's great. Well, Wallaroo, the real question is, are you going to open it then? Yeah, I reckon open it. Someone will eventually. It might as well be. Gaz, I don't know what's going on with your microphone, but it is blowing my mind. <laughs> Yeah, I'm apologies. I'm trying to fix it. No, no, that's good. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. Now, uh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So when people say, "Should I open it or shouldn't I open it?" It's like if you, the thing is, someone eventually is going to open it. It may as well be you, right? If you're if you want to um, sell it or whatever, um, then you know you're you're adding. You're just you're thinking of it, the value of a product. And I think the true value of a product is the experience that you get from it. Um, all of my, all of my toys were well and truly uh, played with when I was a kid. I would play with my toys until they were dust. Right? They got well and truly played with. They had adventures. Um, and you see, when I'm collecting Sergeant Slaughter action figures, if I see a Sergeant Slaughter with um, scuffed um, torso or or paint wear or loose knees or whatever, I'm like, yeah. That's great. Some kid had fun with this toy. Some kid had adventures, right? And if you see a uh, completely clean one, you know, it's great to have that in your collection as a pristine representation of a character. But there's also that, well, d did anyone enjoy it? Did anyone have fun with it? Uh, and for me, the real value of something is the memories behind it because, you know, money can be spent, but, you know, good memories... They last for as long as you can remember them, right? The older I get, the less I can remember. But yeah, there's true value there. Uh, Wallaroo about whether he's going to open it. Good question. I don't know. It's not that I'm against that sort of thing. Well, man, it's yours. If you don't want to open it, don't open it. But if uh, you're not against it, you may as well be the one to do it. It's your childhood toy. It's your childhood toy. Be, be that inner child and release him from his bubble. I think it would be cool. To or don't. To don't do it and then get angry. <laughs> yeah. After 30 plus years to be able to open that figure and have that feeling that you had as a kid of yeah. opening a brand new Joe. Ugh. Heck yeah. I say do open it. it. Yeah. How's the O-ring? Is it intact? Because if it's not intact, you might as well open it. Change it out. Yeah. Yeah, that's the other problem with Joe's in, in the package. That O-ring eventually is going to give way. So then it becomes, you know, Joe is broken in pieces. So, yep, that's true too. The backing will disintegrate eventually. Time will open it. So you might as well enjoy it. I recently got the 2006 Sergeant Slaughter 
uh, convention exclusive sent signed by Sarge, sent to me by Kelly. Uh, <sighs> check out her channel too, Slaughter Daughter. And uh, the bubble had come off the card. So it uh, it opened itself. Sarge was, uh, yeah, the figure itself was too tough to contain. Theory. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, he opened himself. But, yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things where I feel like um, – what's the what's what is what is your purpose for it if you want to display it if you want to put it on a hook and have it displayed as like a um a throwback you know this is what it used to be you know then that's great it's a great display piece if you're not sure what to do with it or, or whatever just do whatever whatever the first thought that comes to your mind is if it is to open it and enjoy it then do it it may even um give you some some uh some thought to start collecting again, you know, mess around with it. But yeah, they will all open themselves. The the warthog sarge I've found are the worst for those T hooks. J hooks? What are they? What are the hooks? J hooks. T bars. T bars. J hooks. The <laughs> the the inner crutch workings uh, that holds the O ring. Um, the the hook is often snapped on the warthog sarge. More than I've ever seen on any other G.I. Joe. The Warthog Sarge hook is consistently found broken, which is weird. Mm. I really got the childhood feeling when I got into collecting Mega Construct He-Man. Yeah, they look really good, the Mega Construct He-Man figures. Like tiny, wee 1980s memories. Yeah. Um, Mega Construct figures are so much fun. I don't have any, but I've seen the they did a Castle Grey Skull, um, which looks amazing, uh, and the and the figurines, the minifigures look amazing too. I'm all in on the origin stuff, so I, I don't disagree with uh, your feelings here on the Mega Construct stuff because if it, if they weren't out, I probably would have picked up some of those instead. But yeah, they look good. They aren't bad. They are good things. I enjoy them. I enjoy looking at them. I don't have any in hand. Here we are. Some knowledge of the key figures is an offense to humanity. It's terrifying to play with. I didn't realize that the the new are we talking about the new O rings that they've brought out now from um yeah. like the you know he's talking about the 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 modern scale, the four inch figures. Oh right, 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 right. Yes, yes, yes. I see what you're saying now. Um the the yeah, I haven't really fussed around with any of those, but uh, now I know Hans, to be careful with it. Hans, you Modern can ones, find gotcha. replacement parts for those, and they'll uh, you can swap them out when you break them. Mm. Uh, if Plus, someone's if someone's had to make replacement parts already, <laughs> that's not a good sign. You know, it's just the construction of those modern figures. It's it's that modular style, and everything is plastic. It's it's. You know, even with the classifieds, I use um, shock oil for all of the, right. the legs so that they don't hang up and break. You know, because that's why with my classifieds, most of the time I buy one to keep in box, one to open. Because if they break, I want to have that back up there. But yeah. Yeah. When you, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Triggered. Uh, so you haven't broken any yet, Hans? Wait, you haven't, you haven't broken any yet, I say. <laughs> He's already triggered, poor guy. So you haven't broken any at all, Hans, is what I meant to say. No? Uh, I haven't broken any because I haven't really fussed around with them. Most of mine are still in the box that um, Ken sent me. The only loose one I have is a roadblock. And to be um, fair, I haven't really... <laughs> I did. I'm a caveman. Who did you break? <laughs> Captain Caveman. Hans I'm going to probably think it was Lady J that he broke. Oh, trying to get those legs open. That's disgusting. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> that Castle Grey Skull is holy cow, 200 plus US, and it's a Lego set in brackets. Uh, a big one. As far as, Le no, it's not brackets, is it? Bunny ears. What are they called? Uh, as far as board. Lego, what's that? The the building bricks one. Oh, 
As far as Lego I goes, though, a comparable yeah. Lego brand set would be much more expensive. Yeah, if Lego if Lego made a um, a scale Castle Grey Skull to minifigures, it would be more than two hundred plus, way more. And that um, the mini the constructs Castle Grey Skull is truly more in scale with those figures as as far as what the the Mattel Castle Grey Skull was when we were kids. So. Wait, you saying you saying that that their Lego version Grayskull is it's size it's, of the orc? It would be like almost twice the size of the uh, Castle Grayskull from the Mattel when we were kids. Oh, oh so that's huge! So it would it's, be it's, for yeah. these origin figures, then, right? Well, no, it, it's you've seen the one they have at Walmart now, right? Which is it's the no. revamp, the old. All right, yeah, yeah. So if yep. you right. look at the construct set, it would be to the size of those figures. It it doubles up the scale. So the construct set oh. actually looks like what the castle looked like in the cartoon when He Man would be walking up to it. Right, it looks great. Uh, Hans bought three grunt figures. The first had a creased elbow, so I bought another. I don't. What is it? Oh, seized. Sorry, sorry. The first had a seized elbow, so I bought another. The second one's leg snapped off at the plastic T joint. I have a third, and I'm scared to open it. Uh, yeah, I mean, you had to buy the same figure three times, mate. Yeah, and these are the the modern figures that Hasbro just released, and I'm sorry, but they're garbage. Right. They all oh, right. Those them. ones. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't have any of those ones yet. Mattel owns uh, Mega, what is it called? Construct? Mega Construct. And I think they could kill it using the He-Man and Halo Buck molds with muscle pink plastic. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 did they do the He-Man in the muscles? I thought they did. I, they, they've made pretty much every licensed out there. Yeah. Like, I want to... Unless I'm misremembering, uh, I will never admit that I'm wrong. But <laughs> unless I'm misremembering um, that the um, He Man had a muscle, I thought they did. I definitely have a muscle version of Sergeant Slaughter uh, because, of course, I do. You can tell a lot of love went into the uh, Megan Strikes Mode 2 line. Yep, I agree. It yeah. looks great. It looks great. It is a hidden gem. It is. Um, and if I wasn't already. So you know, I, I live in a shoebox, so I don't have I don't have room. I used to have on display. Um, I used to have on display. Is that a streamlabs link and invite? It is. Jump on if you can. Jump on. I got time. What am I going to do? Jump on the stream. I just, looked, yeah. I just looked it up. They did make Masters of the Universe muscle, muscle. figures. Oh, they did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure why it's not working for our good friend, but let me go put on pants. No, mate, unnecessary. Wear what you're wearing. That means I've got to go and put pants on, and I refuse. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> um, let me. Here's Hans Chan now. Hello, good sir. Good day. Good day. Oh, it is nice. It is morning. Oh, What's no, it's up? afternoon now. It's one afternoon to afternoon. Good day. Good to see you, bud. Guys and Mr. Sweeney. And Dude, you got your hair cut. I did. I chopped it off. Now there's a cancer patient wearing my hair now. Nice. Well done. Good well done. Strong Chinese hair. Hey. They're I hear it's so comparable to uh, Kryptonian. It's true. They could hang me yeah. from the ceiling by my hair and I will stay right there. We won't kink shame you, mate. Whatever you're into. <laughs> <laughs> a testament to the strength, not a testament to the kink. Ah, oh, right. Well, both. <laughs> From opening Lady J's legs to... <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, look, toy connections. Ah, Ken, what are you doing? Man. Jump on in. The link's What's there. Up, Ken? Uh, if, if the link works, the link's not working for my buddy... Uh, Justin, I don't know why it didn't work for you, mate. It should work. How many can we fit? Let me try. That's what she said. Sorry. Ah, oh. see? Now look. 
Slaughterhouse Live. It's a blue show. It's a blue show. It's not family friendly. <laughs> well, this is, uh, this is Slaughterhouse cool. After Dark. That's right. And it's only afternoon here for me, so. <laughs> uh, give me one moment. <laughs> I'm just uh, going to send an invite in uh, Facebook. Uh, I, I'm shocked that you chose the Triple T over the Equalizer. I always thought the Equalizer was a superior vehicle. I mean, look, um, the thing is, the it, it's it's hard to pick one, right? So, for me, um, if, if I have to pick between one or the other, I've got to go with the classic. Um, otherwise, yeah, I don't know. The equalizer, so the equalizer, whilst Sarge is on the box, isn't really designated as his vehicle, right? Um, hang on a second. Uh, no, I just threw the link in the chat, buddy. Uh, I did not plan this, it just happened. The link is in the chat somewhere. In fact, here it is again. It was not planned. I didn't realize I was going to be sitting here with these fine gentlemen. It just happened. Uh, yeah, so the equalizer. Oh, sorry, guys. Go for it. I was gonna say. So, what if what if the equalizer was motorized like the Mauler was? Oh, mate, look. <laughs> if you add a if you add a if you add a motor to anything, it elevates it. But the, the equalizer is probably the 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 best of that mold, in my opinion. Um, but it's not really designated as. Sergeant Slaughter's ride. He's on the box, but it's not Sergeant Slaughter's equalizer. It's the Marauder's equalizer, right? The Warthog mm. came with Sarge, so the Warthog is Sergeant Slaughter's. Um, the Triple T, the same. But, yeah, I don't know. I might change my mind tomorrow, Hans. We'll check check back in tomorrow. I'll, I'll reconcile this with my therapist and get back to you. <laughs> so that just leads into this whole thing about, so because in the first season of, of the Dick season, yeah, yeah. You with Dragonfire, where Sarge was basically the leader of GI. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you into that? Do you like that, or you were just like, mm. I think. Um, so, as a Sarge fan, it's hard not to be into that. But I think Operation Dragonfire is the best of the Deke animation. Um, I think it subtly, it subtly hints uh, at the events of GI Joe the movie by being on, in the Himalayas, and then obviously. Um, changing uh, originally the, the opening of operation dragon fires in the himalayas um and then changing cobra commander back to um human form uh you know so it touches on some of those those finer points but whether or not Sarge being uh the leader of gi joe i mean he's if we am i into it yeah i'm not against it was i was i upset when hawk came back no that's fine he's he's the you know um and duke and and I guess Flint eventually. Uh, yeah, I was fine with it, but I think it all comes down to uh, what they what was happening. I mean, it was a it was a world event, and they really only had a handful of Joes in that miniseries, right? You've got the characters that were basically the Marauders, and then you had uh, Scoop, Stalker, uh, Lady J, Stalker, Lady J, um, like they they are. Oh, Trying to think who else was there. I was going to say Spirit, but he's a Marauder. Um, I think they got the same voice actor for Spirit back, if I'm not mistaken. But I know that they didn't for a lot of them. A lot of the voices sound the same in the Deke series. Um, did anyone have, have an issue? I think Hans has an issue with Sarge being in charge. Me? No, I like yeah. Sarge a lot. I, he was, yeah. after that played, he became the leader of my Joes because my dude. Oh, players, okay. My Duke figure sucked, and I didn't have a hawk, and I didn't own a flint. So when I saw him in charge, I was like, and ironically, I had the equalizer. And after seeing that, the triple T right. went in the toy bin, and the equalizer became his tank. So, so my opinion on the Sarge is that he's not an everyday GI Joe. Like he doesn't show up at the barracks every day. Um, in fact, when he first shows up in the episode uh, part one of Arise, Spend to Arise, nobody knows who Sergeant Slaughter is except for General Hawk. They're all like, who is that? Who is this guy? And it's like, well, that's Sergeant Slaughter. Um, so I don't think that he should be an all-the-time leader. I think it worked for Operation Dragonfire as that miniseries. But, yeah, he should be the guy that is, 
you know, he's the last resort. If he's in, shit hits the fan. And that's why he comes in uh, in the miniseries. And that's why you see him uh, in the slaughterhouse uh, in G.I. Joe, the movie. But like, I've got a very one sided view on Sarge. So uh, other opinions are always welcome. Here we go. I, will here. Say, I, I prefer the. I prefer the look of the Marauders in the Deke animated series as opposed to the actual toy. They had yeah. camouflage pants, the brown shirt, like like low light. He's wearing like a short sleeve shirt, shirt. Well, not short sleeve. Yeah, like rolled up sleeves with like an undershirt, as opposed right. to like his original uniform with the the three tricolors. It looked a lot better. Uh, yeah, I don't disagree with you there either. So comically, comically on the back of the. Um, Slaughter's Marauders cards, it says, um, I'm trying to remember the exact words, but they they really talk up the camouflage, like they're hidden from Cobra because of their camouflage. It's like bright, the bright blue just doesn't make sense. <laughs> uh, the rest of it's the rest of it's great. So thankfully, thankfully, they refrain from adding any of that blue to the vehicles because the vehicles are perfectly painted, in my opinion. Yeah. Crash, I don't know what's going on uh, with yours, buddy. You seem to... You keep you keep crashing out, so the name is relevant. But your your camera and your and your mic's not on. I'm not sure what's happened there, friend. The little slaughters marauders tank. It was a tiny little, small little one. The armadillo. No, not the armadillo. It dethroned the armadillo for me. It's a single cannon vehicle. It's really small. I feel stupid that I can't remember the. Is name. it the one that came with the persuader? I think it was Pers the one with back. Well, the Persuader is a lot bigger than the Armadillo. Which yeah, one did well, Thunder come with? Thunder came with the um, Slugger. The, the Slugger. The Slugger. Six missiles in the back. The so, wait, that is a uh, an Armadillo chassis. It's the Armadillo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It so it's say, actually yeah. still called the Armadillo too. Yeah. Oh, it is. I'm confused a bit. It's like the Marauders Armadillo. Sorry, yeah. how's yeah. my volume? I'm, I'm using my phone microphone rather than a headset. So do I sound yeah, really bad? Or am I okay? Good. No. Not as bad as you know you normally do, so you've picked up a little, yeah. Okay, well that's it's progress. Right? <laughs> Any progress, is progress. Yeah, Before yeah. Progress. Over, though, can, can can we hear Ryan's Mountie voice at some point? What you kind of problem get with a the little... Mountie there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's not how we I sound. I can't get enough of it. I can't get enough. That's of his kayfabe, Mountie. That's his kayfabe. Yeah. We all know uh, that yeah. Sergeant is just here to troll. <laughs> if the Mountie has been a legit cartoon character on that, the Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling, that's what he would have sounded like. Well, he would have stole the show. I'm surprised there wasn't a Mountie wrestling character ever. Mm. Was there? Yeah. yeah. The yeah, hell are you? Dr. Joe played the Mountie. A bad Dudley do right. Dudley do wrong. Jacques, Jacques Rougeau. Jacques Rougeau. He might remember him after he after he he dropped the mountain gimmick though. But anyway, it who was, was he after he dropped the gimmick? I've only known oh, him as the oh, as the yeah. oh. Well, he went to the tag team with the Quebecers, right? Yeah. This was oh yeah, team. right. That was before, though, wasn't it? After I think it had to be after. I'm guessing. I think, after. I think the Quebecers I was ninety two ninety four. I thought the Quebecers were before because he became the Mountie because uh, Raymond left. I yep. thought. No, you're you're thinking of the fabulous Rougeau brothers. Uh, that's who I'm yes. thinking of. Yeah, right. And then and then it became the and then he became the Mountie, and then the Quebecers was with uh, okay with Pierre Jean Pierre Lafitte or whatever who, whoever that was. Got yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's what I, I made that mistake. Yeah. So Wallaroo yeah. says I was a bit young for GI Joe's golden years. Oh, don't mention the golden era to uh, to Ken. He'll yeah, it's his thing now. <laughs> Up through eighty five, I was nine when the movie came out. So my era of GI Joe was the movie and later the weird era with Shark Tank, submarines, and circular saws. Look, the thing is, a lot of the um, Ara episodes of GI Joe Sunbow episodes. They had some crazy stuff too. Like they had mind control and they had time travel, and it's not like they didn't have their silly moments. They did. Um, Deke and took us to a whole new level. I mean, even the comic book landed an X nineteen on the flag, and we all know that can't happen. Or the the Defiant shuttle on the flag. I mean, so 
There you go. Yeah. And you're right. Uh, and you're right, Jos Josiah. He did. He did take a role of quarterback to break the dynamite's jaw back in 1988. So, uh, so uh, can the reason? <laughs> love it it's too good so ken this was actually a unplanned it was supposed to be a five minute just test um and then the guys jumped into the chat and i was like oh i could do 30 minutes and we're at nearly two hours now for an impromptu but th this uh, is good i get to connect with uh, with gaz and ryan for the first time uh like in real time as well i know hans and i have talked in real time before but this is this is good to get this uh to get this uh um this is chat. the first i've seen hans chow face to face Mm. Uh, yeah. so You're this welcome. is such a handsome face. I know no, he's he's now the uh, the poster boy for the slaughterhouse. We can't lose you now. You're in. You're in forever. <laughs> you can't. You can never leave. <laughs> used to be uh, unless unless Gaz is um, hiding some model esque looks behind that. Oh, you mean the avatar? Is not why it is that avatar? Him? Yeah, is the that avatar is you as far as I'm concerned? Yeah, <laughs> I don't need proof of otherwise. Yeah, as an artist, everyone is beautiful. It's the uh, first that make people ugly. There you go, Hans Chow with the logic. Uh, yeah, you're a, you're a deep philosophical man. Look, I would love the bounty voice with that. Uh, now there's a there's a laughing tear emoji. So is that true or is that not true? Does that <laughs> for what if you we add need the slaughterhouse wrestling championship? It's yeah. exactly the voice we need for that. Yeah, Don't exactly know how right. The real, the real WWE might not work very well, but for what we need to do for cartoon reasons, just mm. do it. <laughs> yeah, those the Mountie uh, SWC promos. Um, yeah, they're becoming fast, fast becoming my favorite. Uh, it might even eventually knock Macho Monkey Wrench off. It's it's the horse that makes it. Having the horse, right. it's just perfect. If it doesn't elbow drop off the horse, well, then we're in. Anyway. That's right. If it doesn't happen, if that doesn't happen, I'll be very disappointed in myself. Just, I just I sent you a, uh, a new Hitman promo as well that uh, Mountie might want to respond to. There you go. Hans is the good-looking oh, Joe fan. Yeah, the Facebook you, I, Did he have a face turn for a bit? The Mountie? I don't think the Mountie ever had a face turn. He was with the boss man, apparently, so I'm seeing here. Uh, yeah, but yeah. the boss man was the boss man not being a good guy. Well, the boss man was a face for a while. For the, mm, I yeah. just remember him whooping the tar of Al Snow. Who I didn't like, so to me, he's a face all day. <laughs> True. What's, wrong yeah, with yeah, yeah. What's wrong with What's Al Snow? Wrong with him? I just I don't. Al Snow, Harley Quinn, Deadpool, anybody who's slightly crazy, get them out of my face. Give me the well, straight face. Al Snow had the whole thing. It's like, what does everybody want? Head, you know, he had the head thing. I mean, it's not head on. It's but I'm just saying that that's what he would do, and that that was his shtick. I didn't like it. Put him through a um, table. <laughs> Hans Chow, I have a feeling Leonardo might be your favorite Ninja Turtle. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Called it. <laughs> Straight lace down the really middle. So, so who's my favorite G.I. Joe? Duke or Tunnel Rat? Why? Tunnel Rat is the only Trinidadian G.I. Joe represents, right? Right. But, I mean, the leader, Duke. Why? Because he's boring. He's perfect. He's, he's a guy who wants to be in charge, you know? Who's my second favorite? Flint. Why? Blah, blah, blah. If yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. rise to Pentor rise and you go down the chain of command, that's almost my favorite G.I. Joe's in the right order. Why? Because everybody I know is a clown in real life and I need straight laced people in my family. You know what I mean? Well, so is Captain America your favorite Avenger? Yes. Stop it. Right? <laughs> Superman, Superman is your favorite Justice League guy. He's not. I actually don't like DC. He's mine, Superman. Yeah, I'm not a big DC Everyone guy. Is too, DC is too, too powerful. Everybody's too strong. You know what I mean? My favorite DC guy, funny enough, would be uh, Nightwing. I like Nightwing a lot. But he's pretty straight-laced compared to Batman. He's straight-laced, but when you place him against Batman, who I think is clinically insane, 
he he's still more seen attempting to kind of etch his way and become healthy again. He's right. Bruce Wayne, who is basically Batman, he doesn't even refer to himself as Bruce Wayne in his head. He's plummeted into the hole. He's at the back, the bottom of the hole. And you hear Bruce Wayne say it all the time. I adopted uh, uh, Dick Grayson so that he wouldn't become like him. And I like that dynamic. I love that. Yeah. You know? how, how many, how many yeah. decades has it been that Dick Grayson hasn't been Robin in the official comic storyline? Because the mid-80s, it was already Jason Todd. So it had to have been the early 80s, that, or maybe the yeah, mid-80s, yeah. Dick Grayson has not been Robin in the yeah. official, official comic. I'm not talking about the alternate universes, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it's been a long time. In the movies and the cartoons, he is. But it's been Jason Todd and then uh, Tim Drake for a long time, and then Damian Wayne. I'm not sure if anyone came after Damian Wayne. That's around the time I stopped watching. How but close are like we to? How close are we to getting beyond? Um, you know, so we've had how long? Okay, let me reword this. So, how long has it been since um, Nightwing has been Robin, and has that been longer than Robin was Robin? Hang on, I don't think. So. Ooh, it's close though. It's because Robin. More than, it's more than thirty-three years. But We're Robin. Here, so more than 33 years. Robin first appeared in like 1941 or something like that, right? Or 1942. So it would be about 40 years that he was Robin. And it's pushing. So it must be coming close to be Robin. It's getting close. It's getting close. That's actually a great question. I, I should look that up, right? Yeah, Gaz, you're a DC guy. Let's... That's what he No, my favorite, my favorite bat character would be uh, Red Hood. So, oh, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Batman. That's really recent. You're talking about the Jason Todd version of Red Hood, though. Jason Todd version of Red Hood, you know, sporting yeah. the brown coat. Mm. Yeah, that does uh, look cool. Um, post Scott Snyder run, I think is what you're thinking of. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we should talk. We should talk Batman. I'm a big, big Batman fan. So gun, gun toting. I want to kill Batman. Mm. Red Hood. That's the guy I like. I like I like Batman because of the psychological questions he really poses. You know, mm. and I like Superman because of regardless of how hard he tries, at the core of what he is, he is not a human and he never will be. He's just pretending. So he always has to try to be what we are by nature. And it's Batman the same reason always got the best writers though. Like they always had either Frank Miller or Jeff Loeb or Scott Snyder or somebody writing him who was like who could right. just do so well with him. Well it elevated right. Batman for a while though, didn't it? Did. Yeah, yeah. Or I, I think it's because Batman's a more interesting character to write for compared to Superman. Superman is yeah. Is John Cena. Batman is CM Punk. Who you want to write for? There we go. There we go. And CM oh, Punk is the title tomorrow night. We got to talk about this. Yeah, John Cena. Just, just before we flee off of if of anything, and before I forget myself as I'm old, um, when. Sergeant Slaughter comes out as a G.I. Joe classified figure. Are we going to see a Sergeant Slaughter Slaughterhouse wrestling match classified size? Man, I got to do something, right? Well, let's let's bring it up. Because he'd be the same size as all the other wrestling figures now, eh? I was going to say. But you could do that already with your Mattel Ultimate Edition, couldn't you? Yeah, I could do it with this guy. I could do it with this guy. I mean, technically, I could do it with all of them. But um, he looks compared to those other guys. That's G.I. Joe Sergeant Slaughter to me. That is a G.I. Joe. That is a good representation of G.I. Joe Sergeant Slaughter. Yes, I agree. Proportionally speaking, that is a good animated look of Sergeant Slaughter. Uh, you I think he's going to be a? You think he's going to be like gung ho size, or you think he's going to be smaller? Be no, big. definitely, definitely that size for sure. Yeah. There's no way he's going to be shorter than gung ho. Um, yeah, yeah. And the Sergeant It'll be. Slaughter it's actually you, unfortunate. Sorry, I'm go sorry. On. I was going to say the Sergeant Slaughter you have on the screen. This is the uh, roadblock that Amazon exclusive. That's the buck they used for that roadblock. Oh, oh so right. Okay. Until, that makes right. sense. Okay. Well, uh, as a as a digital render, I didn't want to um, just assume, but I can see I can see why that would be the case. I do know that there's a multi year deal, so we're going to see a bunch of different ones, but. Um, the thing about the thing about it, Hans, is that um, they as much as cool as this as cool as this scale is, they I just don't think that I could 
I think the sillier they look, like GI Joe scale, like the the easier it is to make it look real. Like the sillier it, the sillier they look, the easier it is to believe it. But I think if I have these guys jumping around, there's a lot of good uh, channels that are doing it with classified scale and wrestling scale figures. Um, but I just don't know if I, I I barely think I have enough skill to do it with GI Joes, let alone uh, classified scale. Oh, don't do that. I, if you did it, the, the bigger scale, scale would be the master of the universe figure would be the best ones to use uh yeah and cobra lang does an amazing series where he do, uses these in a wrestling ring so oh, yeah. definitely check out cobra lang too um, he's amazing yeah yeah yeah. so these guys sort of work for that style uh so this would be my next if i was going to do anything other than the gi joe ones which i'm too i'm, I'm all in on that i'm o-ring deep in o-ring <laughs> wrestling right now um <laughs> but the um yeah this one would probably be the other scale that I would probably consider, but I don't, I would, I'm not going to do it. Um, just because time, time being what it is, I mean, I will do a video on it. I'm currently working on a video now, uh, for, um, Iconicon discussing all of these. I got to sit down with Sarge this week. Um, and we talked about, we talked about all of these. Um, so snippets of that will be part of the Iconicon, um, video. But I will release an unedited version because we talk for hours. And we actually got to, I mentioned this earlier, but we actually got to recreate this moment too. So um, we, we were looking at this and I was like, you know what would be a great idea if we just um, recorded this as the, um, that when you rang the number for the free uh, mail away Sergeant Slaughter. Huh. So that's awesome. Um, Cool. What channel animates the figures in the ring? That would be Cobra Lang is the one I was referring to. He does the um, Muscles of the Universe style. Um, had I known I would be talking about it, I would have uh, put the link in the description and uh, definitely would have done that. But check check out. Yes, it is. It is stop motion. Correct. He's very. My, what I do isn't stop motion. It's what the Joe Berg kids call play motion. So everything I do, I do on camera um i don't have a full i like i stop motion when it's done really well and corbera lang does it very well is an art form and i fully respect people who have the time and effort to put in to make a stop motion but it just takes so long and it already for me for, feels like it takes so long if you're looking for a channel it'll be on the recommended tab of my channel so if you go to it's in my channel too. Oh, it is okay. Uh, good, you, even better. Yeah, if you go to the bottom of my channel, you'll see it there too. His 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 link is there. Um, I've also got Ken's, so check out Ken's channel there. Um, Ryan, you've got a you've got a new channel. You want to plug your new channel, newish, in comparison. Yeah, I can I can put it in there. It's, uh, uh, it's, uh, God, I can't even remember. It's the Island of Misfit Toy Collectors, where it's just there you go. but about absolutely nothing important um just wasting time so ah, I, I would like to well that's what we're doing now right <laughs> we're all wasting time technically wasting my time. job wastes my time i'd rather be doing what i'm doing now so yeah you know. oh, true <laughs> so the invites out there i'd like to have all of you guys on the show we talk about just you know like uh me and Matt Comstock just talk about, you know, Cold War stuff, which we wasted five oh, yeah. hours talking. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Man. Time spent um, enjoying anything is not time wasted. Yeah. There we True. go. Correct. Well said. well said. I agree with that. Han, have you got, I've seen your Instagram stuff, but do you have a channel as well? Because I've not, I've not seen that. I have two young children. They don't allow me to do anything. Ah, fair enough. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally, you yeah. get a channel. We, we need to hear it on a basis. It, well, I, I appeared on a bunch of different channels to talk about things. I have no idea how I ended up there. People just asked. And I was like, yes, I would love for people to listen to me for more than 15 minutes. <laughs> and I can pretend to be an expert on something. Because as a man, well, your wife doesn't what, allow me to be an expert on anything. So Right. <laughs> yeah, I feel you, mate. I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all, I have all I have is, is this Instagram, and I draw a lot of retro stuff. And yeah, it was very good stuff. Uh, what's your Instagram handle so people can find it? Hans underscore Chow. There we are. 
I mean, can't get much better than that. Gaz, what do you do, mate, other than on everybody's chat everywhere? <laughs> That's all I do. Yeah. <laughs> I just work and I'm here. Gaz is one of the most cheerful people I have met in the last year and a half. Oh, yeah. Oh, Gaz yeah. is a really stand-up guy. And he's Look got all these that. guys. These guys are happier. They're happier than me. No way. I'll tell you what, Gaz. No let way. me tell you something. When I didn't, I didn't know, I, w I wouldn't have considered my channel um, successful at all until I saw Gaz in the comment section of some video. You see Gaz no. on every single, every, every YouTube channel that I go to in the chat section, I will see Gaz. And then when Gaz finally showed up on mine, I was like, ah, oh, yes, I've made it. Yeah, so I, I had the exact same experience. I call it the Gaz yeah. stamp of approval. Stop, right. stop. Yeah, yeah. You're making me blush. <laughs> I, can, <laughs> I can tell you look a little bit pink in the face, yeah. It's constantly <laughs> Well, too bad. I've gas. already coined the term. Gaz stamp of approval. I've already coined the term. So once we got that out there, you can unpinkify your face. Gaz, <laughs> is, Gaz is the Nick Fury of the YouTube comment section. Yes. Oh, look, yes, I, just, I, just try to keep, I just try to keep positive, positive vibes going. That's all I try to do. Mm -hmm. You guys put in the say, hard work. All least I can uh, do is say something polite. You guys are doing a great job. Like your 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 play motions, Zazel, are stupendous. They do great. Oh, thanks. Ken's man. Ken's videos are awesome. Hans, if you haven't checked out the Dark Side of Duke on Ken's channel, please what? do yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, it's one of my favorite so. videos on the Ken's channel at the moment, which I've said yeah. a few times. And, and Ryan, I'm gonna check out your channel, and. Need some positive yeah, yeah. vibes there. I blame the dark side. Lazy eyebrow sure. transformers. I like to think I was good friends with Ryan, but he didn't tell me he had a channel. I'm a little yeah, bit... I didn't know either. He's not Ryan very vocal about it. You have to just find him on the. You just have, you have to scroll YouTube until you see Ryan's face. You go, this guy's got a channel. This guy doesn't tell anyone. Everywhere, everywhere I go, the secret channel. Everywhere like... I go, Ryan's there. So it's like I see Ryan everywhere. So Ryan is your gas. I typed in the island of misfit toys and I got Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer's ranking mass. Yeah, yeah. What is this? That's him. That's him. Didn't you know? That's Ryan. I'll send you famous. That's not very believable. Being from the third world does not make me stupid. That's another another hit quote from Hans Chow. Hey, Zaz, I do have to give you a shout out. When you got Sarge to give that shout out to Brian, HCC788, that was awesome. Right. Yeah. That was yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. awesome. Very big so advice. That's, you and, yeah. that's, that uh, that's for the upcoming uh, Cobra Convergence 6. Oh, uh, it's not out yet. If you're a Patreon member, no, that's fine. It's no, no spoiler, but if you're a Patreon member, you can watch it now. But um, yeah, I did. Um, I hooked up. I thought it would be fun because he's done he's done a few Sergeant Slaughter videos, and he mentioned Slaughterize it. And I thought it'd be fun to have Sergeant Slaughter do a little uh, um, promo for. Actually, I wonder if I've got it. I wonder if I can play it. I want to play it. Let's play it. Yeah, I don't let's play it. Who wants to see it? it? Brian, um, I, I, I like to see it. Awesome. All right, here we go. I'll play it now. I'll be right. Uh, yeah, I'll be right back. I'll, I'm, I'm still here, but I'll be right back. All right. Here it is. This is a if I if I hit this correctly, this should be the promo. Attack! Hunt! Don't care these blankets. This is Sergeant Slaughter, and I've been informed that there's some kind of cobra conversions happening here at the slaughterhouse, and I, Sergeant Slaughter, have come to put a stop to it. I've re-enlisted. With the Joe team. Hey, sorry. I... What? Fan event. What? Fan event. Fan event. Fan event. Fan event. Oh, fan event. Well, why did you say so in the first place? The Cobra Conversions is a G.I. Joe fan event. Well, I'll allow that. So carry on. But you, Hooded Cobra Commander 788, I, Sergeant Slaughter, am keeping an eye on you. Is that clear, slide ball? 
Okay, Zanzel, I'll let you get back to your show. But listen up, maggots. Don't forget to check out the Slaughter Daughter official channel where Kelly, my badass bitch daughter, and I, Sergeant Slaughter, hang out and talk about all kinds of behind-the-scenes stories and many never-heard-before life experiences. Any questions? Good. Then make sure you watch and don't make me or Slaughter Daughter have to come looking for you. And that's in order. Until then, as you were, enjoy the show and don't forget to slaughterize it. Now always remember to keep your chins up, your chests out, and never, and I, Sergeant Slaughter, me, never, ever let your enemy or cobra eat your breakfast. Yo, Joe! Yo, Joe. Yo, Joe. No one eats my breakfast, Hazel. What's just, that? He just, he just never lost it. Yeah. He no. Still has no, he still got it. Damn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that is as good as any G.I. Joe promo, in my opinion. Fan event. <laughs> uh, you're Me saying too. fan event. <laughs> it's a fan event. He still seems terrifying, though. Like I just, like, I wouldn't mess like, with him. No, 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 I wouldn't mess with him. He seems terrifying. You know? Yeah, yeah. So that was just a little, a um, little bit of appreciation for hooded Cobra Commander. Um, so I put the request out there. Um, there's only I wouldn't ask. I wouldn't ask Sarge to do just anything. Um, only if I think it's going to add some value. Uh, I wouldn't. I would. I would definitely not want to overstep my welcome uh, when it comes to my childhood hero. But he was more than happy, more than happy to do that promo uh, for Hooded Cobra Commander, and that will be you know uh, officially played. Promo, right? What's that? You know, he, appreci he appreciates you a lot. Like when we had him on on that surprise when he jumped on, one of the things I said was Zazel should be the official president of the sergeant slaughter fan club and he and kelly both nodded and goes we all agree with right. that we all pretty much yeah. voted you in so he's very fond of you right now so just have to to say, the look on your face is when you jumped on that on that on that uh video <laughs> wow yeah yeah i was not <laughs> expecting it uh, i think ken showed a little bit more emotion than i did i'm not i'm not the kind of person that um does a lot of emotions like i just it's not in my wheelhouse uh, so if I if I showed any kind of emotions, it was a win. Uh, but, uh, that's not to say I wasn't feeling something inside. It just uh, outward expression is not exactly my strong suit. Ken, on the other hand, was full on O ring, yeah. uh, O face. Ken was squeeing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, you can, you can, you can, we you all can have see a family emotion. I have Justin, a few. it's all good, mate. You can jump back in on the weekend. We've got enough. This is an unofficial uh, hangout with my channel members. So channel members, uh, next weekend being the first weekend of June, uh, we will have an official catch-up. Um, it was originally just going to be um, just hanging out in the background, but I think this has proven successfully that we can just stream it live if unless someone's got a, um, any reason why we shouldn't. Well, you wanted to test your signal out ahead of Iconicon, and it seems to be just fine. Right. Well, I'll put it to. I've got two channel members right here, and I've got one in the chat. Is anyone against streaming next week's live? I'm not against oh. it. No, I'm. I'm all for it. Nice. Ken, how are you doing? From Justin, you might know him as a different name. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he uses a different alias, but um, glad just uh, doing great. Um, actually, hanging out at my parents' place right now to give the. Uh, this, the my son a bit of time to hang out with the grandparents, so oh, those yes. are those yeah so those are slash are not my Snoopies back there. <laughs> Major pain. Was, <laughs> that was a movie. I was looking for a roll for a minute there, Ken. Just saying. Perfect. I've got a few. Uh, yeah. So everyone that's uh, um, in the chat or is watching this afterwards, there is a. Um, 
a way to join as a channel member. I'm not exactly sure how you do it. I just think there's a join button, but um, yeah, there's a little there's a little button there. It says join. It should give you an, an emoji if I did it yeah. correctly. So yeah, that's it. I'll uh, I'll watch if I can remember. I have to set a reminder thing. Look, uh, it's going to be uh, seven thirty Eastern Standard Time. There you go. Ken, under the name, I didn't want to. I didn't want to give you a name out there in case it, you didn't want it out there in the world. Uh, yeah, we've been world. talking every day for a week, and we even chatted on the phone last week. So yeah. I was cooking dinner, and uh, we ended up having a nice chat. So I, can, I highly, I, might, um, yeah. I do enjoy having a chat. Um, he's got a great, he's got great insight. He's got some good stories. He's got a great collection too. So um, great Sarge collection, second best Sarge collection I've seen. Mine being <laughs> the first. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Shameless. Always, always looking to put, pick up more sarges to get to that seven hundred and seventy-seven. Um, yeah, but I'm a little bit behind as far as that's concerned. I wonder if I've got a photo of any of my collection in here. Let's have a look. Most of us look like we're sitting in our collections. Yeah, right. I wish I could. I thought, uh, I thought that was it behind you. Only a little bit. Uh, a lot of my stuff's in storage because uh, I moved to a shoebox. So, um, yeah, uh, I sold, like I was saying in the, in, when you're in the chat, Hans Chow, the, uh, mo the modern era stuff I sold before I moved. So it's only, I've only just recently gotten rid of the, my modern era stuff. Um, and, I've only, and I've only just started um, piecing together some collection. But uh, eventually I'll move to a bigger place and I can display it properly. Like I've got a whole Lego Western town that I used to have on full display with train set and everything. Um, uh, and I had to I had to put that into storage. So as soon as I have enough space, I'll start putting all that back together. So and all my or even most of my I think out of the nearly four hundred sergeant slaughters that I have in my collection, I think only half a dozen are out of storage at the moment. The rest of them are in uh, in tubs in a secret hidden bunker. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the slaughter bunker. And you yeah, also yeah, yeah. you yeah. also right. just started to collect the um the GI Joe. Pit from Rise of Kumra, was that you? Yeah, yeah. I used the pit as the mobile slaughterhouse in the uh, yeah. In the, so the slaughterhouse wrestling championship takes place within the mobile pit, but it's not the mobile pit; it's the slaughterhouse, as far as I'm right. concerned. In kayfabe, yeah. in story. Yeah, I got a jet, but uh, if you guys are still going in an hour, I'll probably jump back on. Oh, I highly unlike it, but yeah. <laughs> But, but <laughs> I said that half an hour into this stream. Yeah. That's two and a half hours in. Yeah, I'll yeah. talk to each of you guys on either Instagram or, or Messenger or something. Um, sure. uh, catch you later, Ken. Thanks for the later, invite. Ken. So happy to jump on. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. You're dismissed. Right. He says the longest goodbye is that kid. I call Ken a kid. I call Ken a kid, but he's he's my age. But he's going to look young forever. That it's Chinese. Kid, oh. It's like me. Is that... Probably no, right. How old are you, Hans Chow? 40, 43. I'm 44. You're older than me. Get absolutely... Oh, get wrecked, mate. <laughs> well, that, the, idea, the idea is ultimately to continue looking like I'm 20. Like, oh, I did this thing. I did this thing. I came yeah, home. Yeah. So uh, I work in a school. I am a teacher. And we have a okay. uniform, so I have to dress in a full three-piece suit with a red tie, and I set my hair okay. back, and I always look like try to look very attractive, as attractive as possible, because whenever the young mothers come to pick their sons up, I want them to <laughs> underestimate my age, so right. that they say, "Oh well, oh you know, you wouldn't do anything." I was like, "No, I, I do know. I have children of my own, and I have a wife. Oh, well, you wouldn't mind? Oh, twenty something, are you?" And so I came home, I parked up my car, and I got out of the car. And that's the nice thing about living in a Caribbean country is that all year round, the lovely ladies like to dress in their little yoga pants and stuff, and they do their run. Right. So there's young girls that come running down the road. They must be like 22 years old, maybe maybe somewhere in their 20s. And this girl, she's like running, and she looks, and then she like looks forward, and she takes a double take and looks back at me. And I was like, I kind of feel in my heart of heart, it's like, Doing a good job, Hans. Exercising. Well done. Been good. And then wow. I go inside. Wow. I do. I look at my wife and I say, "My darling, you're a lucky woman." 
<laughs> we change our son's diaper or whatever, you know. <laughs> Back to reality. <laughs> Child runs off and rubs like chocolate on my perfect white shirt. So like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh dear. Well, you had a moment for a moment, and then the moment was gone. It's, it's all there, yeah. But Yo, it, Joe. It, but Ken is Ken is Ken is forty forty seven too. Yeah, both. I think he just I think he just hit forty. Yeah, he just, oh, just turned forty. Uh, it's a good age yeah, to yeah. be. It's a good age to be. I'm enjoying my forties more than I enjoyed my thirties. It's true. Nobody questions you. Uh, I have everything kind of put together. I mean, oh, I, I don't have it. anything put together. I'm just, I think that, I think I've just resigned to the fact that it's uh, it is it is chaotic and that's it. Let's just enjoy the ride. I mean, the important things are together: roof over head, food in stomach, clothes on back. You know, water in. Ah, right, that, yeah, the basics. Water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, true. Podcast is going, speaking to people. You know, it's record is on. Yeah, I remembered it this time. The I did a recent uh, episode of Welcome to the Slaughterhouse with the guys from Call Sign Longbow, and I was 15 minutes in before I realized that I hadn't hit record yet. Mm. So yeah, that was so yeah, it was a bit rough. And so at the at the at that moment, I was like, all right, I got to start again. But I gotta, I can either act like nothing has happened. Or I can acknowledge that I fucked up. So yeah, I just acknowledge that I fucked up. Uh, yeah, but and they were cool to start again. Though. I mean, they must be. Oh yeah, like thankfully, like I, I, I was, I was frustrated that I hadn't hit record, but I was still like, you know, still accommodating to my guests, you know, and, and trying to keep the energy up. Uh, I was disappointed in myself, but I still tried to, I still tried to inject some humor in it. So then, when I'm asking the same questions I've already asked. I would ask the question, go, okay, now tell me the answer like you haven't told me already, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> and then and then eventually when we got to the Lies point where the when we got to the point where um, we're in now in new territory, I uh, sort of like pad myself in the back and say, all right, we've made it past the point of, of repeating ourselves. This is all fresh new stuff now. So Justin's the youngest in the group. But yeah, well, you were born in, uh, in the 90s, right? 90, 89, sorry, 89, if I recall correctly. You said you were the last of the 80s yeah. movies. Justin was born when I was starting high school, so I don't really want to hear it. Ouch. <laughs> oh, man. Gaz, where are you at? In your 30s or 40s? 20s? Oh, um, my 40s. Okay, there you go. He's a good, he's a good I'll just let him leave it at that. I'm not going to say anything else. You got it, I'm buddy. Forward. You got it. 46. I'm, I'm the old one. Well, you still have that youthful vigor about you. Well, yeah, I have no hair, so that's a good. I've been married for it's... 22 years, going on 23, so yeah. Well, well done. Congratulations. What's your secret? Um, she's always Say so you're sorry home. every day. Yeah. <laughs> it's, my, it's funny, right? Because, and I don't know if you've had this experience as a married man, but do you realize all your uncles and even your father and everyone, every other male in your life who was married before you did, didn't give you any advice on how to handle the woman? You had to kind of figure it out yourself. And it's something I brought up the other day. Is this X rated? Can I say some stuff? Go for it, mate. Go all right, for it. Cool. So I walked in on my two uncles, and they're there. They're older than me, they're in their 50s somewhere. I'm a little confused about where this is going. Yeah, you yeah. Walked in on your well, uncles, you know what? right? <laughs> this you is X-rated, you say? Not yeah. me. You brought us to this position, anyway. Ah, okay. no, don't make fun of that either. Anyway, so they're there, they're mm. drinking, and I said, "Listen, you two, y'all didn't warn me about anything," and they looked confused. And I said, "I have not had sex in six years. <laughs> I didn't Ouch. warn me this was going to happen." <laughs> And they're there and they're laughing to themselves. And they're Chinese, so they do the laugh where their eyes right. get small. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I and then I, I went on and I was said, You didn't warn me that the only way to defeat the argument is to pretend you didn't know. You didn't warn me to like, you know, that that if if you did if she's on the other side of the house and she's calling you, if you pretend not to hear, you can always use that as an excuse. 
you didn't warn me about anything. And then yeah. it's like, well, it's good that you learned by yourself. And I said, I could have been divorced several times in the last series of this. <laughs> Why didn't you warn me to prevent it all of this? And it's not nice. It's not fair. And you know, on the flip side of that, when you have kids, people want to tell you all about their experiences when kids are concerned. That's where all the horror stories come out. I want to elbow drop my kids sometimes. And they're like, no, you can't do that. I was like, well, you elbow dropped yours and I'm fine. Anyway, <laughs> Relatively, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, me and, my brothers would, you know? me and my brothers would elbow drop each other. Yeah, uh, We turned out all right. See, I was the eldest male. Therefore, I was ah. allowed to elbow drop and too tall to elbow drop. But then, mm. note that I used the distinction. I was the eldest male. There were two older females. And from them, I learned that women don't fight. They do indeed damage you. Mm. Mm. Soul, but not right. physical. Yeah. <laughs> True. Speaking of uh, physical damage, did anyone other than me ever pull out a uh, mattress out to the outside and then jump off the roof onto it to see if you could? Yeah, man. Yeah, no, too. I did. So the, after the uh, second time, the umbrella well, off the roof as well too. To see. Oh, if you've got to work. try that. Yeah, yeah. You have to try that. In, in fairness, we we only had like three story houses around us, so that wasn't really an option. Well, it's still an option. It's just uh, a little more lethal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You did jump off a second story balcony. I did drop off a second story balcony with nothing underneath me because I thought it looked uh I thought it looked like I could handle the drop. Mm. How did it go? Mm. You could not handle uh, the drop. I didn't break anything. So that when my parents came home, I was just lying in bed. So they know uh. I didn't break anything, but I was walking very weird and I didn't understand mm. why. Was that before or after you walked in on your two uncles? Very <laughs> 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 before. Right, okay. well, that's why <laughs> right? It's your two uncles, right? Yeah. Singy Australian sense of humor. <laughs> I'm just repeating your stories back to you, buddy. I don't know. <laughs> however, I interpret it, yeah. So, yeah, all right, guys. Uh, at the two and a half hour mark, and before Ken shows back up, let's just call it <laughs> an end of the day. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to doing it again. Um, this it'll be uh, seven thirty next weekend, next Saturday, seven thirty p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which will be Sunday morning for me. Uh, so I uh, hope to see you again. Uh, we'll see. Oh, we'll see if we can have another successful mission. Hans Chow, where can we find you on Instagram, please? Hans underscore Chow. Ryan, YouTube channel. Uh, it is. God, I can't think of the Island of Misfit Toy Collectors. I will send it to Han so he has it. Perfect. Gaz, we'll see you in every single uh, chat <laughs> of every single YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> well, if you yeah. And uh, hopefully again here next week. Uh, if you're if you're free and available, please do jump back on. Well, All I right. would say that this, after two and a half hours, has been a successful first live. Uh, wasn't prepared for anything. Wasn't even prepared to be on camera. Uh, I was gonna get a, uh, I was gonna get a beard trim and a haircut today, but as it's now hit after two, I might just go screw it and I'll do it after work tomorrow instead. Magnificent beard. Oh, thank you. Very yes, much. it is. It's in desperate I need. I can't grow it, so whenever I see someone with a magnificent beard, it must be complimented for it is amazing. Oh, well, I appreciate it, but uh, rock what you've got. I say, I never beard shame anyone. If you if you've got even just an inkling. My son has just barely some fluff on his face. And I was like, well done. Good job. Good good for you. <laughs> he's Thanks got more mutton chops me. than he's got anything else. Hey, it's all good, mate. Thanks for dropping in. I didn't think I was going to have anybody here chatting. So to have everybody here chatting has been immensely just heartwarming. Thank you. And as uh, time is precious, I do appreciate everyone's time today too. So thank you. Thank you for spending your few hours with me. Thanks for having us. You're, You're welcome. Later, You're dismissed. Later, now, how do I end these things? Let's try this button.